Uh, shout out to the man known as a sergeant. S I C A R I I S G T. Sergeant? That's Sakari Sergeant. Who told him he was a sergeant? Specifically, all one word on Instagram. I encourage everybody to go there. S I C A R I I S G T. Sergeant? Vocab Malone, it's just he's a big nerd. Sergeant Sakari, where he got the title Sergeant from? What biblical book does he base that upon? Sergeant? Sergeant? Who told him he was a sergeant? Sergeant. He's done. I grab my pen and write raps defending the prophecies. I'm not the pastor's friend that ain't mastered in this theology. Slave masters can't ain't have to send an apology. So no, the man of sin can be grafted into this olive tree. At school, we ain't learn about the Persians and Medes. They send us to school to learn about the birds and the bees. Cause under heathen watch, evil plots turn to decrees. Under heathen watch, even cops turn into thieves, nigga. That's how it is on the wild, wild west. Not until the heaven hits the earth will I find my rest. All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Uh, this is your top of the Sakari, and I am back with another video. You know, today, it, you know, it was a good one, man. You know, vocab alone, man. Boy, he consistently does his devilish work, man. For this video right here, man, I'm not going to insult vocab as much as I normally do because um, I don't want people to mistake what's happening here, all right? Now, you remember when Floyd Mayweather fought against... A Turo Gotti, right? It was a real, real big deal. You know what I'm saying? It's a Turo Thunder Gotti, you know what I'm saying, against the pretty boy Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Floyd, everybody knew he was the best, but he still had that pretty boy thing lingering. Everybody still figured if somebody could just catch him real good, he's going to get beat. Yeah, he might be able to punch a Turo Gotti up a little bit, but he's not going to be able to knock him out, and eventually a Turo Gotti's going to stop him. Remember, this was in New Jersey, in Atlantic City. This was a big deal. All the fans there favored uh, a Turo Gotti. This was Floyd's first time fighting at 140 pounds. So during the press conferences, remember, this fight was big. It was huge. But when Floyd went out there, Floyd called him a C-plus fighter, said he was a bum, said he was getting free money, said he punches wide, said his feet were flat. Says a person like that, he'll walk through him every single time. He said he got six losses. He's going to show you how to get the seventh, right? Uh, Arturo Gatti is a fighter who gets great respect from fighters, from media, from fans, from everybody in the sport. And in the buildup to this fight, you verbally trashed him, all but calling him a bum. Why? I mean, I feel I'm the best in the sport. And to be the best, you got to beat the best. And all I did was beat opponents. I worked my way from the bottom to the top. I won a title by beating top competition and top fighters. This guy was handed the title. He's a paper champion. Actually, um, ho I mean, Casa Zoo was the, was the world champion. They stripped him of his title. And um, a tour got he for the guy who, was, who wasn't even known for the belt. And like I said, come June 25th, I'm going to show the fans and the people around the world that I'm the best pound for pound fight in the world. I'm going to continue to, to dominate and continue to win win big fights. Floyd, I can't imagine that you expect Gaddy's going to try to box with you. You expect him to try to get inside and make you fight, right? It, well, it really don't matter to me. He can, bring the he can bring the pressure. He can box. I'm a true champion. I'm willing to go to his turf in Atlantic City. I'm going to step on him. I'm going to crush him. Y'all can mark my word to this. I'm going to crush him. He's a C-plus fighter. I'm an A-plus fighter. Come Saturday night next week, all the fans tune in because I'm going to dominate. This guy is flat for these swing. Wow. I'm not worried about who his trainer is because his trainer can't get in there and fight for him. The fans in Atlantic City can't get in there and fight for him. I'm ready mentally, physically. I want all the fans to tune in because I'm going to treat him like he's a C-plus fighter. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to dog this fighter. You know, this tune in June 25th is thunder versus lightning. And we all know thunder make noise, but lightning strikes. And I'm going to strike because I'm ready. I came to camp in shape. I'm wearing 140 right now. I'm ready to fight this week. I was ready to fight four weeks ago. Like I said before, I'm going to take this guy in the deep waters and I'm going to drown him. And if he talks to, talk some trash, I may cut it to four. So what happened? Floyd went out there, beat him up real good, right? Giving Gotti fans a chance to see some what they came to see. Straight right hand by Mayweatherness in this round, but as just missed for Gatti. Right hands by Mayweather land like 
Blazers. I told y'all, they don't get that book on HBO. Part is moving in to increase his stamina. Too much hands. Oh, final shot. Final shot. And then after the fight was over, Larry Merchant began to question him and downplay his win, right? Because he said, Flo he said, what are you talking about, man? You said he was a C-plus fighter. You said that, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm putting my undefeated pound for pound crown on the line, and he's putting his waterway crown on the line, and man, it's going to be an explosion. Now, you're the guy who said that Arturo Gatti was a paper champion at 140. So if you win that fight, how is this the fourth world title in as many weight classes? You were never a champ at 140. Arturo Gatti is world champion again, like I told the fans and I told the people. Arturo Gatti is nothing but the truth, and he fought the truth. <laughs> That's and not what you were saying, Floyd. We, we you called him a C-level fighter. You said we, he's a paper champ. And by the way, you were right about a paper champ. He wasn't a real champ. So you beat him. You weren't a real champ. You were a real champ at 130, 135. No basically not giving Floyd his credit that he deserved for getting the win against the Turtle Thunder Gotti. Floyd's like, come on, man, that's a Turtle Gotti right there, right? So I said all that to say, I'm not going to do that with Vocab Malone because at the same time, it takes away from, it takes away from the most highest credit. It, it, it makes it so that people aren't really actually looking at what's happening here. Now, the scripture says that God was going to choose the foolish of the world to confound the wise. Vocab already told the whole world that I'm dumb, right? But he's right. I'm the fool here. I'm the dummy here. What God has happening right here in front of everybody is we got this guy Vocab Malone. Very studious guy, right? He's a scholar. He's an author. He got a master's degree. You see all the books that he has right here? I'm sure he reads way more books than me, right? If they lined me and him up next to each other, put his accolades out there and mine, they would say I'm the fool and that he's the wise, all right? So I don't want to keep coming out here calling him an idiot every time I turn around telling him how dumb he is because it takes away from what the Most High is doing right here. He has this guy right here, the, the, the guy with all the accolades, man. You guys are getting ready to hear this guy butcher the Lord's word. <laughs> over and over and over again because that's what he does so he got the first of all he got this smoke room right this is the smoke room where you call him and he asks you all the questions right but it's funny because in this smoke room right here <laughs> this guy goes from person to person to person and just gives all of them a different version of a different lie all the time it's not even funny man and let's not forget smoke room we know where he got that from he got that from sakari he, he constantly talks about sakari he constantly watches us he's trying to steal something from us right but let's get into this because this dude is satan all right but uh you're in the green room right now i got two people ahead of you just hang out and and uh whatever you are able to do i i, I do see everybody um just uh gotta keep it tight so we can get to everybody hey how you doing elect lord willing yeah, I, I, how you doing, Vocab? I'm doing all right, and uh, thank you for joining in the smoke room and being willing to show your face so I'm not just looking at a blue oh, yeah, screen. I, <laughs> I just got a, a quick question, Vocab. Um, how, do, how do you prefer, well, not prefer, but what's more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, more acceptable for you to, like, when identifying the Israelites? Is it DNA, or would it be the curses of Deuteronomy? You hear that? Listen to this dude. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you my honest answer, but I don't imagine you like it. Maybe you will. I the mean, way, I, can't, I can't force you to answer how I want you. No, know I understand. I'm just, what you're saying. I'm just saying I know it's not the answer that probably a lot of people will be looking for. Right. The most important way I would identify Israelites would be by spiritual Israelites. So, <laughs> You hear that? By spiritual Israelites. So... <clears throat> First of all, you can't find that in the Bible. You can't find spiritual Israelite in the Bible. This guy said he would define Israelites by spiritual Israelites. But listen, once again, vocab Malone, is, like I said, he's calling everybody anti-Semitic. So he's saying these people who are saying that they're Israelites or Jews, he doesn't, he doesn't look at them like they're Jews. They're not really Jews. He does it by spiritual Israelite have the characteristics of Christ? Do they have the fruit of the Spirit? And most of those guys don't believe in Christ at all. So that's the thing. How come he doesn't do any videos about that? Instead, he runs to those guys and tries to tell them about us and what we're doing. Do they keep in step with the Spirit? Do they keep the law of love? <laughs> do they keep the law of love? The Bible says love is that we keep the commandments. These guys don't need, you see all this jargon? This is what you get from, from a master's degree. Galatians talk about, do they keep the royal law like James talks about? Do they keep the law of Christ like Paul talks about? In <laughs> but do they keep the law that Christ told them to keep? How about that one? What about the law that Christ said to keep that would not pass away until heaven and earth passed away? <laughs> how about that? You guys don't keep that law, though. Huh? This is how you determine the spiritual Israelite. Everything other than what Hamashiach said. That's crazy, bro. 
Now, I'm not saying that's genetics. I am not saying that's genetics. But I'm saying that's the most important category of Israelite. And I, I could put it in quotes because I know I'm not saying it physically. I am saying right, it right, right, spiritually right. in the sense of that's what I believe the Bible and the New Covenant te- Well, Okay, I'm so fake. It's, it's ridiculous. So if somebody, if somebody comes up and they're being nice... And they're saying hi, and they don't cuss. Vocab says they're a spiritual Israelite. <laughs> oh, I believe in Jesus. I don't cuss. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, would you like to hear the gospel? If you do that, you're an Israelite according to Vocab Malone. That's not in the Bible, but that's Vocab Malone. It matters most. I'm not saying that right. it doesn't matter at all about who might be descended from Jacob, but I, I have a sense that we can do some speculation, but honestly, I think only the Lord knows. So now, guys, only the Lord knows. You see that? But you guys, I thought these guys said that the Israelites weren't going to lose their heritage, though. <laughs> so what do you mean only the Lord knows? How does only the Lord know if you guys say these guys have always known? But you see, Vocab, you see, this is him being anti-Semitic again. Because he's saying these people, say, if, that, if what he's saying is true, then how are these guys able to say they're Jews, Vocab? If only God knows. Do you see this liar? But see, what's happening is this thing is blowing up. This guy's been sitting here this whole time telling us that we're crazy. We're crazy just for him to sit right here and say, only the Lord knows. But then to say he does it off of a spiritual Israelite, which isn't even in the Bible. <laughs> this is crazy. Who, who's, direct, yeah. who's truly descended from I, Jacob? I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Because like you would- Look, He's over here misleading his brother. Ellen. Brother got a good spirit too. Vocab's over here misleading him. My man before, like, how does he know that he's not a, you know, a Canaanite? Yeah, and I wasn't saying that, just so you know, to be offensive, I wasn't trying to be funny. Yeah, I know, him. I know, I mean, I... So, like, how does he know that he isn't a Canaanite? Like, damn, so is that what niggas are doing? Niggas is walking around feeling like Canaanites? <laughs> is that what's going on? It's unbelievable, man. Oh, how does he know he's not a Canaanite? So the same thing with this guy right here. How do you know you're not a Canaanite, man? It's spiritual. Bottom line is when I opened the Bible, God said this was going to happen to the Israelites, and it just so happened that this happened to me. So it's safe for me to assume that I'm an Israelite. I'm not going to just wake up and say, oh, I'm a Canaanite. Like, this guy's as crazy as hell, man. I don't agree with a lot of stuff you say, but if you say some factual stuff, you know, I'm going to agree with it. He didn't say nothing factual, bro. Like, even for me, example, like, how do I know I'm not a Canaanite? And I would have to, I would answer that by saying, you know, I look at the curses of Deuteronomy and my- Exactly, man. So what did you just give? What did you act like what vocab said was something for? How do you know you're not a Canaanite? Then you're gonna ask, well, how do I know? The same answer that you just gave is the same one that everybody else is gonna give, man. It's retarded. Spirit bears witness, you know. Exactly. <laughs> So, so you just said, well, how do you know you're not a Canaanite? So you don't think the guy who vocab asked that question to is going to give the same answer that you're giving here right now? With, 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 the, with the word of God. So, you know, that's why I would say I am an Israelite. And then when I look at, you know, passages like, um, what is that, uh, Luke 21 and 24, is it? And that passage right there, that's what we call uh, a Christian, Christianity kryptonite, man. <laughs> Christianity is kryptonite, man. Luke 21 and 24 are out of the Savior's mouth. See, they don't got nothing for that. You know what I'm saying? They can't demonstrate it happening. You know, Dr. Michael Brown, you see what he did. He said, oh, yes, we've been scattered everywhere. That's not scattered. This says captive. They need to demonstrate how <laughs> this is crazy because we can demonstrate the people being carried away captive into all nations. This happened after the time of Christ, <laughs> right? But it just so happens the people that are saying that they're the people, it didn't happen to them. So these guys are doing all kind of other stuff. These guys don't like that scripture, y'all. When um, Christ says that um, we'd be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem be trotted down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Look at those ways. See, these are daggers right here. See, this is stuff that they can't deal with. Just little simple ones like this. And this is, out of, this is in the New Testament. How do you guys deal with this? How do you substantiate this? Show us when this happened, please. You know what I'm saying? It says, oh, they got taken back into Egypt and then they got sold. There was no buyers. Nah, it just said they were being carried away captive into all nations. And the scripture said everybody that held them captive refused to let them go. So they should still be in them places being held captive. And they are because the Bible says when the Lord returns, he's going to turn back their captivity. All, the whole Bible flows together very fluently until these guys start getting their hands on it and making it inconsistent every damn place. You know, when you look at that, that's a very, very, very powerful statement. It's a very, very powerful statement. It's a very powerful prophecy. And it shows you that the Most High God saying Yahweh Shai was the, was the ultimate prophet. Because what a, that is like, that is such a, because 
These guys want to play the game. Oh, scatter, scatter. No, he specifically said you're going to be carried away captive. <laughs> we already know the scriptures say you guys are going to slavery on ships. We already know that. But we know that these curses will follow you multiple times. So they could say, oh, well, that happened then. It doesn't matter whatever they're saying. It happened over here too. And it happened all around the world. <laughs> and it helped to press the Israelites all over the place. And not just that one. We know Christopher Columbus came over here and was grabbing the Hispanics, grabbing the natives, taking them to Spain and other places as well. You know what I'm saying? So the scattering, and the scattering had already happened before we went to slavery on slave ships. That's why in Acts chapter 2 it said Jews out of every nation under heaven. Because we had already been scattered somewhat. But it got completed in that one, right? You know, that says a lot, you know. Like, how do you feel about that? <laughs> And it's called because, you know, uh, yeah, when we get to Ashra Kai, Ashra's going to ask him that same question too. Volkov has nothing for that. Twice in the day, he got hit with that today. Ooh, wee, wee. Well, by the way, I'll answer that. Uh, I appreciate what you said, and I imagine your attitude towards what you just said probably is reflected in your screen name, right? Elect Lord Willing? Lord Willing. Yeah. We're all, we're, Lord willing, hopefully we're of that. Hopefully, we know we're the Israelites. God is, and, and Israel's God's elect. But within that elect, there's an elect. And hopefully, we're the elect that gets delivered out of here, Lord willing. Nobody knows. It's like I was telling Alton Johnson that day where he's talking about, oh, you don't know, you don't know. Like, how do we know, man? You think I'm going to arrogantly get up here and say, yeah, I'm, I know I'm saved like you Christians do? Fake Christians? Yeah, so I respect that and I understand that. And to be honest, and I'm turning to Luke 21, 24 right now. To be honest, it's somewhat similar about how I would say I know that I'm a Christian. <laughs> how I know I'm in a religion. We're talking about us being the Israelites, the people of God. How do we know that we're these people that descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And we're relying on the prophecies of God to give us that understanding. You guys aren't relying on nothing God is saying. You guys are relying about every damn thing. Like, I pray. But you, you know Christian is like a derogatory term. Like, that was a derogatory term. For the Israelites that follow Hamashiach, not for a devil like No Sweat. We own it proudly. You know, that, that's like, that's like a, being yeah, called we, black. In the, in the... Well, I don't think black's derogatory, though. I got to tell you, when I was coming up. Man, isn't it crazy when you get to hear a white boy tell you about when he was coming up and was derogatory or not? And what type of stuff that we used to do back in the 90s because of our ignorance and us not knowing? You know, I remember... I remember looking over on the de desk next to me and Jerice Jordan. Jerice Jordan, this black guy next to me. Yeah, this dummy. Who I went to middle school and high school with. You know, she was scribbling on her desk. We would all do that. We had the little wooden desk, you know, in the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, in the yeah, 90s. Yeah. And uh, she was writing, uh, black is beautiful in all caps right th on her desk. Why would she have to write that? Why does she have to write black is beautiful? Because black is derogatory. It's looked at as a derogatory word. So she has to put black is beautiful. Have you ever seen something that said red is beautiful? No, but black is beautiful is, a, is like a slogan. It's also written in the Bible, but it's still derogatory. And I remember, and I'm not going to go to a bunch of stories. This is funny how he acts like he just doesn't give it. He, like he doesn't get it. Like they don't have terms called the black sheep. Like yeah, 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 during my time, it was not considered, black was not considered derogatory. There's a reason why they, man, listen, man, don't, they're, they're, listen, you guys, during my time, this guy's talking to a black man, but like I said, he's telling black people that they'll leave Islam because Islam's too exotic, and the leaders of Islam are all light-skinned, as if the leader of Sakari isn't light-skinned, as if the leader of GMS isn't light-skinned, two of the elders in GMS are light-skinned, <laughs> right? Matter of fact, the light-skinned man in GMS is the one who taught the dark-skinned man who's in IUIC who has thousands of people marching all over the place. So what the hell is Vocab talking about, man? People would say, I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah, they, that, that's true. See, that, that's say, true. That's a true. black that's thing. True. You see that I'm black and I'm proud. You have to say I'm black and you have to say I'm proud because black is looked at like negative. We have to let the whole world know we're black, yep, and we're proud of it too. Devil's over here talking about black goes a negative, black goes a negative. This guy's a devil. You see this guy trying to twist it up and try to make us see like we're stupid or something this dude is crazy man he gonna tell black people how we're supposed to feel and what's real and what's negative and what's not negative man shut the f man this guy is crazy man i don't understand you know the shirts remember the shirts so i know what you're yeah, saying I, remember. I know what you're saying but now I, I do agree it's a sloppy designation 
a lot of these color yeah, designations. Yeah, and then you like the scripture state. Like oh, now, 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 but it's a sloppy designation. You hear this idiot, man? That's why. That's why I just can't. <laughs> this guy's slick tongue is just crazy, man. A sloppy designation. It's not. It's not derogatory. It's not bad. It's just a something that you guys should be happy about. It's a sloppy designation. I'm so tired of this devil, man. <laughs> like my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I feel like back in the day, if people knew, you know, if they had knowledge of what they were calling themselves, they wouldn't have done that. But he just cut the hell out of vocab. But I think during those times, my people just sat there and sh just sat there and smashed vocab with that. You see that God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's why they're calling themselves uh, by a sloppy designation, like you said, that somebody else designated for us. Like, for example, was just reaching for something, was trying to get something, you know, to call our own, call our own. We didn't have anything. Cut the hell out, this devil. What and you're they saying. took black. But I mean, if, yeah. that's, if you believe white people are Edomites, then the Edomites are destroyed for lack of knowledge, too, because they don't know they're Edomites, right? No, no, not, they're not destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see, the Edomites are still running shit, so how are they destroyed? So, no, Satan. What kind of dumb question is that? How are the Edomites destroyed for a lack of knowledge when the Edomites are running the world? Oh, this guy act like he really just did something right there, huh? Yeah, that's true. I guess you can say that. No, it's not. How is it true? How are the Edomites destroyed? <laughs> How has their lack of knowledge destroyed them? No, it's not true. Don't let this serpent play the game that he's playing, man. He's lying like always. He thought he had a little good one right there. But here's, here's Luke 21, 24. Um... It's, uh, let me read it, because I don't... Uh, Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. They, they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So now, I, let's see what vocab says that means. They shall fall by the edge of the sword. They shall be carried away captive into every nation. And the Jerusalem, which is the land of Israel, that's going to be trodden down on by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Let's see what vocab says it means. Edge of the sword indicates, you know, military defeat, obviously. Okay. Until the times of the Let's Gentiles are fulfilled. No, no, do you see how he just skipped that? Do you guys see that? Oh, my Lord. Do you guys see this? This is what I'm talking about, man. Like I said, these guys got these guys got master's degrees, man. These guys are the wise of the world. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a fool. And I'm just a fool. I'm a, dumb, I'm a dummy here. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen that. But this is the Lord showing you what he means when he says a, a fool will confound the wise. You know what I'm saying? This is a big deal right here. This guy just tried to crafty. See how crafty he is, though? He, but, but crafty at being wicked. This guy just read that scripture real quick, fall by the edge of the sword, gave it, oh, that sounds like military might. Then just tried to jump to, he just skipped being carried away captive. He just completely skipped that and tried to jump down. To, and then he's going to do that part wrong. Watch. Let's go back again. Yes. But here's, here's Luke 21, 24. Um... It's, uh, let me read it, because uh, they, they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So I, Watch them. See, edge of the sword indicates, you know, military defeat, obviously, right. until the times of the That's Gentiles are Until the time of the Gentiles just completely skipped captive into all nations, just completely skipped it. He's, you see, he's looking down at the text. He, he's, he, he is conveniently just reading over that part. Why do you guys think that is? Build. Uh, so there's a couple different ways to look at this. There is a more spiritual way, you know, where you see a, kind of the new Israel being fu fulfilled as people are repented. What the hell? Is, what is he talking about? Where do you see the new Israel? <laughs> oh, my God. You guys, where do you see the new Israel and what he just read in Luke 21 and 24? He just said the new what, what? And and when the last basically the last person is saved who's among the elect, then J Jesus turn, returns and Yeshua returns. So that's that's a strictly kind of spiritual way. As it you guys, what the wait, wait a minute, is that what the hell that scripture just said right there? But do you see what these guys are able to get away with. But it's cool because these guys are able to get away with anything. If we ever said something like that, they'd be all over us, man. But Vocab is the guy that comes out rapping the way he raps, and he's still able to get away with that. So it's no big deal. That was the most terrible breakdown I've ever heard. Let's hear, let's hear some more. <laughs> Israel's being reconstituted with a multinational, multi-ethnic people, 
And that's what that means. And <laughs> you guys, I'm going back. And I got to just do it so I can hear him say all of that in one sentence, man. Wow. Be led captive among all nations in Jerusalem. We trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So obviously, edge of the sword indicates, you know, military defeat, obviously, right. until the times of the I Gentiles are fulfilled. Uh, so there's a couple different ways to look at this. There is a more spiritual way, you know, where you see a, kind of the new Israel being fu fulfilled as people are repented and... And when the last, basically the last person is saved, who's among the elect, then J Jesus tur returns and Yeshua returns. So that's that's a strictly kind of spiritual way, as in Israel's being reconstituted with a multinational, multi-ethnic people. And that's what that means. And You guys, like I said, is that what that meant? What we just read right there? That you shall fall by the edge of the sword and be carried away captive into all nations? And Jerusalem should be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's what he, he just said. That mean. <laughs> oh, my Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, so then Christ comes back when that's fulfilled. However, there is another interpretation that is as part of an end times um, end gathering, there will be a, a remnant of people who would in some way be actually descended or identified with being descended from Jacob, and many of them will become Christians sometime in the end times. Man, can you guys believe this shit? And you guys see, this is what would happen, if, man, listen, if OCAB sat down and did a Sakari-style hot seat, do you know what would happen? You guys, do you, <laughs> do you hear the way this guy is, and you can see it in his eye, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. The way he's breaking it down, you know, he doesn't know what the hell's going on, man. So like I said, y'all, Volcav's very smart, you know, he's a very studious, you know, he's wrote, he's written all types of books, you know what I'm saying? He's a very, very smart, intelligent guy. He knows a lot about the things he knows about. But this is one thing that Volcav doesn't know about, and it's going to get him every single time. Revelation 19 and 10, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou, do it not. It says, I am thy fellow servant. He says, And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. It says, worship God for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. These guys stay talking about Yahweh Shai, but they don't understand the spirit of prophecy whatsoever. We're listening to Yahweh Shai give the, the Jews a very accurate prophecy that's playing out right now from, from what was going to happen to them being carried away captive to what was going to be happening in the Holy Land. For some reason, Vocab reads that he can't understand that not even a little bit, but this is a guy who writes books. He has a master's degree, so we know how smart that he is, or we know how intelligent he is, right? We know how gifted he is. But for some reason, God didn't give him the gift to be able to interpret what he just read right there because we just heard the way that he broke it down. But this is the spirit of prophecy. These guys don't understand prophecy. They can't deal with it whatsoever, and you see what happens. I mean, first of all, you can tell you, you, don't, you might not know what it means just right off the rip, but you can take a, a better shot at it than that. It just said the Israelites were going to be carried away captive into all nations. You can't kind of put together in your mind what that's talking about. You can't kind of like, well, okay, well, should we, we're, we, I should be looking for captives in all nations. You can't, you can't do that off of what you read. It said the Holy Land was going to be ran over by Gentiles. You can't, okay, well, where's the Holy Land at? Let me see who's living there. You can't do that. Like these people are, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? But God didn't give these guys the gift to do that. That's why he said the foolish, we're going to confound wise people like vocab. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> That's probably a little closer to what you would think, although you probably wouldn't agree 100% because you're like, well, become. He has no idea. It's, it's, it's probably a little closer to what you would think. I think this brother, you see the look on the brother's face? He's like, bro, what are you talking about? But he's, he, but, he, but, but you see the spirit he's in. He's trying to be nice and be cool, and, I, and, I'm, and that's cool. But he has to be like, this dude is a liar. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell? That is not what that scripture just said. Christians. But, you know, we believe Christian just means I mean, being, I know, I know what you're saying. I know being what you're a saying. disciple of Christ. You do? You, how do you know what he's saying? That's, you just asked him about being carried away captive. He didn't give you any answer for being carried away captive. How do you understand what he's saying? It, you just asked him about Luke 21 and 24, about the land being trodden down by the Gentiles. What, 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 what understanding did you, do you understand? What did he give you about that? He gave you nothing. 
How do you understand what he's saying? I don't. I don't. <laughs> so I do think that's possible when I would go to Romans 11 as a possible. So now we're just, whoa, whoa, whoa. Romans 11 for what? We're talking about Luke 21 and 24. What are we going to Romans 11 for? Um, uh, way right. to look at that. And, and I'll read it. I know you know it. But the specific yeah, verse... I mean, I mean, I would say that I know everything because, you know, I'm just now coming into the knowledge, man. I'm trying to get uh, get it from all angles. You know, I don't just side with the Hebrew Israelites because I'm black. I try to, you know, get it from all angles so I, so I can r rightly divide the word of truth. I'm not letting nobody lead me astray, you know? Man, this dude's sitting here leading you astray. You, you just asked him about Luke 21 and 24. He told you some shit that it has not. His whole breakdown was wrong on that. Everything that he said was wrong. He didn't say not one part right about that other than the military part. But you're telling him that you understand what he's saying. So if you understand what he's saying, he's leading you astray. That's the whole thing. I got you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So Romans 11 is 25 and 26. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now, you guys, is that even is that even talking about that? No, that's talking about something completely different, too. That's talking about Israel. The Gentiles that, that were trodden over Jerusalem is talking about the heathens. The Gentiles that you're reading about right here is talking about Israel. Vocab doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Wow. Read that again. Huh? Read that again. And then, hold on, there's a, I'll read it again, but. Watch oh, this. We got, you guys, watch this. This is crazy. Man, we got another guy coming in. Hold on. I got to answer this call real quick and bring him in. Bo, I got you, and I got Brother Wilkes as well. I'll, I'll get to you. Um, hold on. Let me see. Well, this is part of the verse I was going to read. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. A partial hardening. So not all of Israel, but a partial hardening has come upon Israel. What does that have to do with the Scripture saying that Israel was going into captivity into all nations? What does that have to do with the scripture saying that Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled? This scripture does, has nothing to do with that, Vocat. <laughs> this is bananas, man. Until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Right. And so the idea is once the kind of the full number of the elect of the Gentiles right. will, will, happens. The full number of the elect of the Gentiles. We know the elect is Israel. So this that scripture Vocat was reading, it proves that the Gentiles are Israelites. That's why when he's going to further read, it says, so all Israel shall be saved, the, Gen the Jews and the Gentiles, all Israel, right? But whatever the case is, this scripture has nothing to do with Luke 21 and 24, though. Nothing. Then you'll see that partial hardening undone among... Oh, the partial hardening. When, 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 when the new covenant's made with us and we get a, a heart of flesh, again. But these guys are trying to say that the new covenant's for them. It has nothing to do with you guys. It's talking about Israel. He just read it. The fullness of the Gentiles come in. When the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, then all of Israel will be saved. Once again, nothing to do with Luke 21 and 24 Gentiles, man. Israel, and then that's the next verse, verse 26. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. And then there's a quote there from the Old Testament. So all Israel will be saved. What does that have to do with Jerusalem being trodden over by the Gentiles? Do you guys see this shit? This is what vocab does. That's why you have to praise the Most High for what he's done, man, because he said he was going to do it, <laughs> and he's doing it. This guy's a Bible. He's the, he's the Bible scholar here. I'm the fool here, right? This guy's the one with the accolades, right? This guy's the one that graduated from college, right, from seminary school. He took it a step further. He didn't just get the bachelor's. He went ahead and went and got the master's, all right? And he got it in theology. So this is his field of expertise, right? So this I shouldn't be able to come here and see this and be able to point this out right here, right? The only reason this has happened is because this is what God wanted in his movie. He wanted to take the foolish of the world to confound the wise of the world, right? This is ridiculous, man. This dude said he don't want to let nobody mislead him. He's sitting there listening to this dude mislead the hell out of him right now. Uh, so that is a controversial verse, but I believe what it seems to be saying is that there's going to be a future salvation of, of a lot of ethnic Israelites, and this is going to be kind of part of the climactic, sort of the climax of history. And that's that's gonna happen. But again, I would say only God knows. You guys, <laughs> do you see what kind of answers you'll get from vocab if you start asking him about some pride? I told you guys how to make him lie on God every single time. <laughs> it's 
it's just it's it's really laughable at this point, man. Because the Most High, he's just so cold how he does what he does, man. Because this is just like whoa. I'm wondering, like, do I need to rewind it again? Am I missing something? How how did him asking him about Luke 21 and 24 turn into vocab talking about this talking about the salvation of the elect Jews and Gentiles? That was, <laughs> vocab does not understand the Bible, man. Never taught to go to try, try to find who are blood Israelites. We're never taught we need to go seek them out. Hey, the law. Hey, I, I would disagree with that now, Vocab. Sure, okay. The scripture states, say, search out, the, uh, search out your fathers and uh, strive for the truth unto death. Well, we got to look for, the, for our, our fathers now. Search out your fathers, though. You know, what, what does that mean, right? A few things about that. Means that. Go ahead. Find out where you come from. That's what I would. That's what I get. That's what the hell it means. Find out who your forefathers are, man. Find out where you come from. Be prepared for the search of your fathers, right? But see, Vokab doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to search his fathers. He already knows who they are. Like he said, he has a Jewish last name, but he knows that he's not Jewish because him and his family checked on it, right? But see, we can't just check on it. We have to go and search for real. You know, they don't have to. They got their whole lines. They know where everybody comes from. Now we came from Scottish, 20 generations, you know, like Tyson Fury. He comes from a 200, what is it, a 200-year-long line of, of bare-knuckle brawlers. They don't have to do no searching. We're the ones that got to search. Find out where you come from. Well, there's a few things about that. What do you think about the passage where Jesus says, my family are those who do the will of God? What, it, what, what that means is he's talking about the Israelites, the ones that keep the commandments, which is the will of God. Simple. Not the hard-headed niggas. My brothers are the ones that do the will of God. But does not change the fact that even if the brother doesn't do the will of God, he's still the children of our people, vocab. So once again, you just cherry-picking scriptures like you like to do, man. What do I think about that? Yeah, do you remember when they, they were outside? I mean, I know you're saying that. Are you saying that to say, like, anybody that does the will of God, you know... Yeah, so it's Mark it's 3, family. Mark 3, right? Uh, then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. And the reason he specifically said mother and brother is because they said, hey, your mother and brother is outside looking for you. Whoever does God's will is my brother and my sister and my mother. So it's not an ethnic thing. Jesus is almost <laughs> putting his own blood family in the, in the back seat to say it's really those who are doing God's will. Now, you might, you and I might differentiate, uh, disagree about what it means to do God's will because I think I have a more of a new covenant understanding. You may have a more of a law-based understanding. You believe, you believe we're in the new covenant, Bokeh? Absolutely. Jesus pours out his blood. See, I've heard a lot of, of arguments on that. See, I'm, I'm still on the fence with that. This is so funny, man, because like I said, God said this is the new covenant that I'm going to make with them. I'm going to put my laws in their hearts. If that if that hasn't happened, how are we in that? Just doesn't make sense. Smoke room. Okay, I'll drop you off then. Okay, hey, what's up? How, how are you doing? doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. Uh, it looks like you guys know each other. Um, no, nah, I don't know the brother, but please oh, okay. say our brother though. Oh, okay, my bad. But listen, okay. right? Yes, sir. Right. But listen, um, so just a question, right? Do you feel that every man from the least to the great at this time, knows the Lord. Does every man know the Lord? <laughs> the smack vocab. <laughs> oh my goodness! See, I'm just letting this play. I haven't seen this one. You know, I I, I seen the Ash one, and uh, this is my first time seeing this guy right here. I, I don't know what he's gonna ask, but I can see right there by the question. I already know what he's getting ready to say to him. Let's see what vocab says though. No, definitely not. Oh, know the Lord. Oh. Oh, no, dip, damn. And this dude just smacked the hell out of vocab Malone, man. Damn. Oh, man, let's just watch how he slithers out of this. Like I said, I, this is my first time seeing this right here. <laughs> but the Lord, the Lord. The Lord, oh, God. no, definitely that not, be, no. Yeah, there's... You agree that... So be, how the hell are we in the new... How are we in the new covenant? The Bible just said the new covenant is when all of us shall know the Lord from the least of us to the greatest of us. Vocab just said, no, that's not true. But then Vocab will say, yes, we're in the new covenant. These guys don't know what the hell they're talking about, man. Does not know the Lord from the least to the great? Every man does not know the Lord. Yeah, that's part of what we got to do. You agree with, with that statement? Yeah, that's why we got to fulfill the great commission to go into all the world. Not every man knows. This nigga, Vocab is dumb. That's what I'm saying. Slocky, he's not dumb. He's smart. Vocab is a, he's a great scholar. Every man knows the Lord is what I'm saying. 
You, I agree. You're right, Bo. Not every man knows the Lord. Correct. Okay. And he asked him this three times. So he wanted to make sure that he could, look at he kind of got a smile like nigga, I got him. <laughs> He's like, I got him. He's like, man, what, what what is this guy getting ready to say to get out of this? Because I just got him. He already knows he got him. So so I just heard you tell a brother that you believe we're in the new covenant, correct? Yes, sir. I do believe that. All right, so let me let me read some things. Let me let me let me explain to you what the new covenant is. We're gonna go to Jeremiah 31 and 33. <laughs> but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more like you do, like how you teach every man and his neighbor, mm -hmm. every man and his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. I will forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. So also, prior to that, if we go up to um, He's supposed to make him make him talk. Make him explain how he's getting ready to contradict himself, man. This. Shout out to this brother. No, no, it was in 33. Okay. Writing in laws in our inward parts so that every man will know the law. So there'd be no need for you to preach or any other preacher to preach. That's what the new covenant is, correct? If you're an Israelite, there's no need for an Israelite to teach each other because we all know, but the other nations won't know. That's part of the blessing. That's part of us being the priests of God. We go and teach the other nations the laws of God. So we'll have to teach, but we won't have to teach each other. We'll all know the, we'll all know the most high from the least of us to the greatest of us. Because he said, this is the covenant I'm making with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Uh, the new covenant. Going to Jeremiah 31. You the, just smack vocab. Covenant's fulfillment. Let me, let me go up a little bit. Well, there was two I'm things. I'm saying so, yeah, the new covenant. New, he said, let's, let's the, go to 31. Yes. Behold, so the, the day bow. comes, saith well, hold the on, Lord. Let me, I'm going to let you read it. I'm going to let you read it, but I just want to comment because gotcha. I think you asked me. Two things about it is the consummation or the final stage of the new covenant is where there is no sin mm -hmm. And we're in a glorified body. Uh, you can find some of this in First Corinthians 15, for example, and also in Revelation. Oh, also, now, now it's the final stage of it. Now, now, see, see this. First, earlier he said we're in it. Then you read the you you read what the covenant is. The brother asked him, "Does everybody know him?" He said, "No, they don't." But that's what the covenant is. <laughs> so how are you in it if you man? Listen, I'm done with Christianity. Christianity, man, this is crack cocaine, man. Twenty one. And so that's the final state. So that's the final consummation of that promise. But in the meantime, it's being fulfilled. God's covenant people are okay. no longer to be looking outward at a set of stone tablets. They're going to actually be looking inward because the Holy Spirit, who is. You guys, listen to, the, the, listen to this calculated way this guy goes. This is his way of saying, don't do what God says. Don't keep his laws. All this slick talk is to say. <laughs> this is crazy, man. By the Father and the Son, teaches them all that they need to know. And this is according to John 13 through 15. If you read that whole section, Jesus talks about he's going to send the comforter or the paraclete, and he's going to be able to teach everything that they need to know, right? This is right there in John. He promises that. And so now... Everything that they need to know. Just because it's everything you need to know, does that mean that that's knowledge of everything and even if it teaches you everything that you need to know does that mean that all of a sudden now that that covenant happens they all know them from the least to the greatest you just said they don't what is all this jargon man because we have a new heart second corinthians five seventeen says if anyone is in christ there are new creation since we have a new heart we now have a heart that can can know god in a way that sus supersedes what the old covenant was because his very spirit indwells in us. Isn't it just crazy to hear these people who the covenant wasn't even made with them talk about, oh, the old covenant. We're not in the old covenant. You were never in, in the old covenant at all. <laughs> it was never made with you. These guys are crazy as hell, man. Just like the second covenant wasn't made with you. What are you talking about? So this is coming to pass. And that's why, and remember in the Great Commission, he said, teach them all that I have commanded you. 
There's a reason why Jesus said that and to fulfill this new covenant. So it's being fulfilled as more and more people become believers in the Messiah and it'll be fulfilled in a more final state. So this is happening. This guy is crazy, man. So this is happening. I will take out your, the, the, I'll, gi I'll give you a heart of flesh and you will not go off anymore. I'll forgive all your iniquities. You guys shall all know me from the least to the greatest. You guys won't have to teach each other. Vocab saying that's being fulfilled. <laughs> like I said, these guys say everything's fulfilled. They don't, they don't understand nothing, man. Right now, it's not finalized, but we are in the new covenant because Jesus said, this is the blood of the new covenant that I pour out. And then he poured out his blood the next day, right? Yeah, but go so ahead. that means that the blood, of, the blood for the, because every covenant has to, there has to be blood to initiate the covenant. And that was the blood that was going to be shed for that new covenant. But clearly, so so what do we know? We know that there already been a sacrifice for that covenant because there has to be a sacrifice with, to, to, to make any covenant good, right? So he was the sacrifice. That was the blood. So the blood's been shed for this second covenant. That's already been done. Now you have to pass over the bond of the covenant, vocab. That hasn't happened yet. That's why Israelites are still out here teaching each other. That's why you just said that they don't all know God from the least to the greatest. You just said that. Now you're double talking and turning around and saying, oh, oh we're in it. But then in, uh, he just asked, you just said, no, we're not in it because you said that everybody doesn't know him. And that's what the new covenant is. I want to make sure that's the perspective I think needs to be shared in this conversation. But but what else did you want to share, Bo? So here we go. We got our brother Ashra Cobb, fire of God, powerful, powerful camp leader out of Seattle. He's out in Dallas right now. He didn't got a hold of no swag Stallone, man. This is hilarious, man. And once again, Bo is going to have to defend well, he doesn't have to defend it, but, you know, he has to give some type of answer for Luke 21 and 24. We get none. Vocab doesn't know who he's talking to right here. <laughs> Situation, Ash, I've got you turned up all the way and I've got you on screen, but you still got yourself muted. If you could please unmute yourself and then you will be. There you go. OK. Hey, welcome to the smoke room. Good to have you. Ash, cause in the smoke room. Match sound there. What's that? Can you hear me clear? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Look how right out the gate I was about to just get out of, just to play around. <laughs> oh, praises. Um, I just wanted to ask two questions. First one, how do you feel about Michael Brown saying the Jews are still under the curses? Yeah. <laughs> and you guys know who Michael Brown said that to? He said it to me. But this is Vocab Malone's guy. They said the curses of Deuteronomy are over. They yell and scream at us about the curses over and over and over again. Now, Dr. Michael Brown, Vocab Malone's grandfather, the Jewish people, the ones that run everything, he's saying that they are underneath the curses of God. That's what Michael Brown said. So I was just asking him, how do you feel about that? That, I don't know, you know, I'm still, uh, well, well, let me put it this way. Now you guys, watch this right here, because once again, like I told you, Vocab's here to be a shield. He's here to defend his brethren, man. This guy is a, He's a liar, man. An unbelievable one. So listen, listen, listen to this. If a Jewish person has not made Messiah Lord, then they are under the curse. Do you hear that? Now, do you see how slick that was? Then they are under the curse. If they haven't made Messiah their Lord, they're under the curse. So that means all these Jewish people are underneath the curse, according to, according to vocab. But that's that's also the case with every person born under Adam. Now, do you see that right there? So Ashraqah asked him a question about Michael Brown saying that the Jewish people are still under the curses. And we're talking about curses of Deuteronomy 28. That's the question that I asked him. Vocab knows that. But you see, Vocab is trying to find a slick way to make Michael Brown right, even though Michael Brown is wrong. And then his way of doing that is by trying to talk about something that we're not even talking about. But he knows he's doing it because Ash is getting ready to call him on it. And as soon as Ash calls him, Vocab knows it. So this guy is here playing this devilish game on his show. But this is all he ever does, right? So, no, I'm talking about the prince of Deuteronomy. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28. See, he said, no, I'm talking about Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, Deuteronomy. So, okay, if you knew that, why the hell are you talking about Adam, man? That's what I asked Michael Brown about. Deuteronomy 28. Are they still under those curses? So why are you sitting here talking about the curse of Adam and Eve? What are you doing? But then when he says Deuteronomy 28, you stop him before he can finish. You knew that. So why are you sitting here lying trying to be? Because you're the devil, man. That's why, man. Uh, that's an interesting thing. See what, do you see what would happen, Vocab, if we could just ask him some questions? <laughs> this is what would happen. Golly. Like, 
is there enough of a continuity between the people from the Old Testament till now to say that? I don't know, but I... What are you talking about enough of a continuity? The, the, the bottom line is the people that he that, that Michael Brown comes from, they're not under no curses, period. So what are you talking about, continuity? Like, what do you mean? The Israelites were in, they were under the curses in Rome, and this is the next kingdom after that. They're under the curses still, but they're not who you're trying to say that they are, your buddy's people. They're not going through no curses, man. But Michael Brown had to say that because he knows that the curses do not end until the Israelites get regathered and put place back in their land. Until that happens, they're living scattered, and they were scattered for a curse, period. My focus is on sin. That's the my focus is on sin, but these guys tell you don't keep the commandments. They tell you don't got to break the, keep the commandments. You don't have to. You can break the law of God. You don't. You can eat whatever you want, but then they say their focus is on sin. Do you see the devil talking devils here? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This guy's very smart, very intelligent. He writes books. You know, he's a scholar. He's done a lot of studying. He has a master's degree. But when it comes to dealing with the Lord's word, this is what he does. He just fumbles all over it, man of the sin that's usually what i focus on so he focuses on the sin is this dude a lying ass bastard or what uh that's that's where i usually go with that idea is the the fact that we're all cursed in adam because we're damned we're not talking about nobody being cursed in adam vocab we're how the hell does somebody ask you, you you've been doing that today a brother asked you a question about the Gentiles, the land of Israel being trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of Gentiles be fulfilled. You go over to Romans where it says to the fullness of the Gentiles be come in so that all Israel be saved and act like those things are talking about the same thing. You're talking about something completely different than what we're talking about. We're talking about Deuteronomy 28. Why are you talking about Adam and Eve, man? Because this is what Satan does. Everybody, I, I, I hope everybody can see this, right? Even a dummy, a dummy like me can see this, right? This is, this is very easy to see. All praise to the Most High. From birth, because we're born into sin. And so Galatians 3.13. So we're born into sin. What does that have to do with being under the curse of Deuteronomy? Being with, once again, this is what he does, man. I don't, say, I, I don't watch vocab that much. That's the thing. But when I do, whenever I do, he gives you this times 10 every single time. Every time. There's never been a time where he, he, where he has not done this. I'm talking about every time. As though if anyone is in Christ, you know, the, what was that? Sound like a horn or something. Oh, that's all right. But yeah, Galatians 3.13 says that the curse has been bound. Galatians 3.13 says, which curse, vocab? You're talking about the curse with Adam and Eve. You're talking about the curse of Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> it's just time to go jump to Galatians 3.13. So that, that's what's hilarious. They act like everything is summed up there. Galatians 3.13. But Yahweh Shai told these guys already that they were going into captivity in all nations. So if Galatians 3.13, the, the curse of Deuteronomy 28 is over, why are these guys still getting ready to go into captivity in the all nations vocab? Make the Bible make sense. Stop making it contradict. It's impossible for you to do it because you're running around teaching a lie. That's why every time you say anything, it can easily be picked through. Now, if the curse is over, Galatians 3.15, if that's what that's talking about, vocab, then, then the Israelites shouldn't have been going into captivity in all nations like Yahushua said that they would. Did if you're in Christ. That's really the important thing because that wipes away any curse. And so these... You hear that lie? So that wipes away any curse. So, but, but clearly, Dr. Brown didn't seem to get that memo. Clearly, he knows that the curse is still going on. <laughs> he can't just say it's over with because then there's a level of question he's going to have to deal with if he says that. But with him saying, yes, it's still going on, there's still a level of question he's going to have to deal with. But I guess he would rather deal with that level of questioning than to say that it's not here. You know what I'm saying? This guy vocab doesn't know what the hell's going on. He just lies every time he opens his mouth, y'all. Really, these Deuteronomy 28 curses, yeah, I see that they come upon Israel. But really, any nation that's not faithful, you see similar things happening to them. Okay, so you see similar things happening to them. You see them going into slavery on some ships. You see their sons and their daughters being given away to another people. So show me that happening to the Edomite nation that's ruling the planet right now since you see that happening to anybody who's not faithful. Show me a nation on the planet that's faithful, vocab. What the hell are you talking about, man? This dude is crazy. Where would, sh Show me the, 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 oh man. So who's the faithful nation, man? This dude is crazy. Show me all the nations having to lend or be, man, vocab, man, what are you talking about, man? Show me all the nations being scattered all over the world. What are you talking about? This guy doesn't understand anything in the Bible. And I mean, but it's almost, he has to, to tell a lie this perfect about everything that you ever talk about. It's like, you, you have to know you're lying. And sometimes things happen even when they are faithful because it's what the Lord wants done, you know, like with Job. Sometimes it can happen. You're talking about Job. 
Okay, let's look at the earth right now. He's talking about faithful. This happens to faithful people. <laughs> you guys, we went into captivity of slavery. We're still over here in, the, in our enemy's land right now. Vocab is trying to act like that's happening to everybody on the planet earth. Because he just admitted everybody fell from great. Everybody sinned. So everybody's falling short. So that means that these curses, we should be able to look and identify these happening to everybody. And guess what? If that was happening, then how could these curses be a sign and a wonder on the people like the Bible said that they would be? If vocab is saying it happened to everybody. This is how you know this guy's an idiot. I mean, like I said, he's a scholar. He's smart. You know, he's the wise here. You know what I'm saying? He, 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 this guy, he's good. He's, a, he's an author. <laughs> a national level, I believe. But let me just read this and I'll let you comment because you probably have your own thing you want to add. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Right. So vocab, does that mean that the curses of Deuteronomy 28 are over? And if it does mean that, why is it that the people of the book that you're reading about, the Jews, they were going to go into captivity into all nation after that, and they were going to be kicked out of their land after that, vocab? Explain that to me, vocab. Hey, you're frozen up. Is your audio still good? Ash? My bad. I was trying to find a scripture. Uh, I'm still here. Okay. I was what, trying to find you, a scripture. I can I help you. What verse time. are you looking for here? I just wanted to take on Daniel 9. You know, the, confer the confirming of the covenant for one week. Um, the uh, the prophesying of 70 AD, Titus, Vespasian, those things. It said that the covenant would be confirmed for one week. Yeah, so it's funny you said that. The reason I had this book right beside me is just last night, I was looking through this section on Daniel 9 and this. This is the Moody Handbook of Messianic Prophecy, Studies and Expositions of the Messiah in the Old Testament. A pretty good book. And there's a really interesting section on Daniel 9. And the key emphasis that they focus on is that basically between the 60, 69th and 70th week, they believe it basically predicts the actual time that Messiah would come. Um, I know there's some disagreement amongst Christians about that. So I'm still looking into it, but I actually was literally re reading that last night. Okay, I'm knows nothing about prophecy, y'all. Uh. Nine, but what would you want to say about Daniel nine? Well, uh, one, I do agree that it predicts the coming of the Messiah, his death, and then it predicts the events of 70 A.D. The prince coming up against Jerusalem, and you know, ultimately putting a damper on things and ending the sacrifices at that time. So I would agree. What's the uh, what's the page number that that part that you read and is on? I'm gonna reference that book. Uh, one one three nine one thousand one hundred thirty nine. It's an Can article you, by the front of the book again? Kevin Zuber. Uh, the Moody Handbook of Messianic Prophecy. Pretty good book. It's got all the messianic prophecies uh, talked about in great detail <laughs> by some uh, pretty strong scholars. But you know they have the. Do you know they have the vision of the 70 weeks laid out, mm -hmm. for example, and some other things. But I'm still I'm looking into the whole 69 and 70 weeks and the time after the 69th week and the 70th week. Uh, Vocab's going to get hurt. He has no business. He doesn't know what's going on there. But here, just let me read to you the conclusion. Then I'll Listen to this. He doesn't, he doesn't know what's going on. Whatever you want to say. It's just a paragraph. The sweep of this prophecy is staggering, and the implications are considerable. For those who deny the possibility of predictive prophecy or of literal fulfillment of the same, this passage presents an insurmountable problem. The timing and details of this prophecy concerning the first 69 weeks and the events that were to take place immediately after those weeks, namely the earthly physical advent and atoning death of Messiah the Prince and the Roman destruction of the city of Jerusalem and its temple in AD 70, have been so clearly and utterly fulfilled in Jesus Christ and in the historical record of the first century AD. So that? deny a literal and complete fulfillment of the prophecy of the 70th week, verse 27, is to abandon all pretense to literal interpretation of the scriptures. But if taken in a literal way, this prophecy makes it clear that what the Lord intends for his city and his people, for Jerusalem and the Jewish people, why ultimately glorious, will include a time of serious adversity and suffering, a time of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. Now listen, do you hear that? So he just read that, right? And these people understand that the Israelites are going to have to go through a thing called Jacob's Trouble, which is also called the Great Tribulation, right? Christianity has taken that and they've, they've flipped it into something else where, oh, it's the people in the religion of Christianity, but these people seem to understand that the Israelites are getting ready to go through something. Vocab knows that too. The question is, are the Israelites talking about Dr. Brown's people 
or the people that, 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 that run the ADL over there, no, it's talking about the Israelites, the real Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and the natives, the hell that we're getting ready to go through. And you can see it brewing up because you see the ADL getting on TV blatant lies about us, right? Blatant lies. They're supposed to hate anti-Semitism, but a white dude shoot a BB gun at a kid. The anti-Semitic is the, the black Hebrew Israelites, you know what I'm saying? But that's all leading up to this thing called Jacob's Trouble, that we can't expect any help from a devil like Vocab Malone. He'll only go and try to help those guys further their agenda to destroy us during that Jacob's Trouble. And... When it comes to Jacob's trouble, it says, they shall be saved out of it. That's the salvation that Yahweh Shai is coming to bring, to come deliver us up out of the hand of everybody that hates us and take us back to our own land. Vocab doesn't understand anything that's going on in the Bible. Vocab wakes up every day to fight against that happening, man. So that's the final conclusion they have on that. Uh, as of now, I'm inclined to agree, but I got to look more into it because I know the authors are a little more... Right now, I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> Somebody needs to ask this guy about Jacob's trouble. What the hell is that, and when does he talk about that? Does he think that that's... He's talking, oh, well, nobody knows. Only God knows. So will we know when Jacob starts going through some trouble? This guy's a devil. Sensational that I am, so there may be some differences, but I'm still looking into it. So sorry I don't have the best answer other than I literally... I'm not joking. I literally was looking at that last night, but I still... Have, you guys, when it comes to prophecy, he doesn't have any answers at all. He has to go to Bible commentary every time. ...do a final conclusion about what I believe. Yeah, that's through the Spirit. Um, you know, I'm just picking your brain, so it's all good. I'm not gonna really, I'm not really gonna pinch down on that. So I would tend to agree with the the end result that they pitched in that book and Michael Brown's look on it, not necessarily his view on who's who, but the right his look on his right. The curses are still in effect. That the curses of Deuteronomy 28 are still effect. You know, just in closing on that tidbit, Luke 21:24. Uh oh, here comes Vocab's kryptonite. Christianity's kryptonite. Luke 21 and 24, again, here we go again. See, these guys can't get away from that. All praise the Most High God, Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? For his son, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, for saying that, for prophesying that. We were going to need that, and he knew we were going to need that in this day. They can't do nothing with it. They shall be led away captive to all people. He sees that as a part of the curses of Deuteronomy 28 being fulfilled. He sure did. That's exactly what he said. That's why I want to ask him that. But he tried to turn it into, oh, yeah, scatter. See, that's the, oh, that's why the Most High is so good. Because, yes, they will be scattered. But Yahweh Shai made sure to say they're going to be scattered. But they're not only being scattered, they're being carried captive somewhere. Because they'd be able to jump on the scattering. They, they can run with that. But the one thing they can't run with is being carried away captive anywhere. And then being scattered throughout all the nations. Um, what I wanted to ask was how you view Deuteronomy 30 then. Here goes another one of the kryptonite. You guys listen to how Vocab tries to do this one right here. You guys, you guys will watch them hot wing it all day today, right? We've been watching them do that shit this whole entire time. Watch how he hot wings this one. This is hilarious. If your initial stance is that the, the curses have to be done away with. I, I, man, Ashrakai, man, way to do it, man. All praise to that brother Ashrakai. You, you guys make sure you go check that brother out, man. Subscribe to that brother's channel too, man. That brother's going hard through the spirit, right? It ain't never stopped. This is unbelievable, man. I, this is just, um, when we get vocab to read the passages we need him to read, not always going to Galatians, oh, Galatians 3.15, trying to run here and find the love scripture. When he's forced to read these prophecies, remember, the Bible says that this, that the testimony of Yahweh Shai, that's, that's the spirit of prophecy, man. <laughs> We're making this guy go back and read prophecies, and he's reading prophecies that are talking about Yahweh Shai. He just doesn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. But I heard you say at one point that you believe the curses are Deuteronomy 20 or old. Well, they're done away with for the Christian. <laughs> they're done those away with. Not, what, 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 what to the, those, you know. Hold up, man. What, what the hell does that mean? They're done away with for the Christian. The people that the curses were put on, it's still on them. Period. The people who the curses weren't supposed to go on, they didn't go on them. What are you talking about? Everybody in the religion of Christianity, what are you talking about? Who ever said, oh, the people in Christianity, the curses are on them. The curses were on the Israelites. No swag. You've been switching stuff up this whole, man. They're done. When I say Christian, though, I mean anyone who's, who says they're in Christ. If and that's a damn lie, man. Listen, the disciples were in Christ. The, the, the Israelites were in Christ then. Paul and them guys were in Christ. Them guys were still under the curses, man. What are you talking about, no swag? After Paul and those guys left, the Israelites went into captivity. What are you talking about? There weren't no Christians there? So you mean to tell me that when we were over here in slavery, hardcore slavery, there weren't any Christians in slavery? But that's not a curse? This dude is crazy as hell. This guy's acting like if you're in the religion of Christianity and you say you believe in Jesus Christ, all of a sudden you're not 
in a, man, so, so, oh my God, this is crazy, man. These devils are sickening, man. So here we are in slavery. When he came over here on slavery on slave ships, the Bible says going to slavery on a slave ship is a curse. They're saying that's not talking about us, but whatever. We came over here on slave ships to be enslaved. Similar to what has happened to the Israelites, which happened to them for a curse. This guy's saying that if we're over here, while we're over here in Christianity, slave master raping us, taking our children, selling them, exactly what the Bible said would happen to the Israelites because of the curse. Vocab saying that that's not a curse if you believe in God. You see, Do you see how stupid he sounds, even though we know how smart he is, how intelligent he is, how much hard work he's done? If your sin is paid for by Christ. Oh my God, your sin is paid for by Christ. You, you, you hear these words that these guys try to use and how they try to... I guess that erases the fact that we're in slavery. Our sins are paid for by Christ. You're not under the curses. Just take this whip to the back. <laughs> Just take this whip to the back. You're not under the curses. Oh, man. Then those curses, they're not, you can't say you're still cursed according. So, you, so, so the slaves that were here in America, could they say they were cursed? And when does it stop? During the Jim Crow era, we couldn't say we were cursed then either. huh? When, when, so when does it stop? Did it stop when we came, were we cursed when we came on slave ships? Was that a curse at all? These guys are devils, man. Listen to this lying ass bastard, man. The law of Galatians 3.13 specifically says. Back to Galatians 3.13. See, these guys think that if you take Galatians 3.13, that just sums everything up. That makes every word that was written before it and after it just null and void. That's over with. When Yahweh said you're going to be carried away captive into all nations, Galatians 3.15 made it so that that doesn't mean what the man. These guys are some idiot. Not, nope, they're smart. These guys are, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Not cursed according to the law. You know, specifically says you're not. Otherwise, what's the point of Jesus dying? <laughs> it specifically says you're not. <laughs> it specifically says you're not. So it says you're not, huh? So we didn't read all. So like I said, everything in the Bible, you just erase it. Here it is, Yahweh said, said, he didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy the prophets. He came to fulfill it till heaven and earth pass. Not one thing in here, shall jo not one jot, not one tittle shall pass. It'll all be fulfilled. These guys said it's been fulfilled. It's fulfilled. It's done. Whoever shall do these things and keep them, he shall be great. No, don't do them. Don't keep them. No, he's not talking about the law of Moses. He's talking about, man, these guys are crazy, man. Uh, but what, uh, what specifically in Deuteronomy 30? Deuteronomy 30 verses 1 through 7. Now you guys see, you, and you already know the way that he likes to selectively leave scriptures out. So let's watch how he does this one. And when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice in all that I command you today, with all your heart and with all your soul, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you, and he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you. And the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possess, that you may possess it, and he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who persecuted you. What do you guys think Bocab's going to say? This? What, what do you think he's going to, what, what is he going to latch on to in here? All right. So, so Michael Brown seems like he would be under the school of thought where you know, once those, I'm, and I'm just asking because I'm going to have to get around to asking him his outlook on that due to his answer about the curses of Deuteronomy 28. But it seems like he'd be of the school of thought that even that still needs to transpire, that the Israelites would be returned to the land of their fathers and that the uh, curses that were on their forefathers and them themselves would have to go upon their enemies. Because ain't that crazy? Because th this is talking about in the end. See, Vocab doesn't know when he's reading that and the Lord says, I'm going to come and get you from all them lands. That's talking about his son. That's talking about when Jesus returns. Remember, the Bible says that he comes in a volume of the book. The whole thing is written to him. He didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets. He came to fulfill it. That's something that he has to fulfill. Going and getting the Israelites for all the lands that God scattered them. That's part of being saved. That's salvation right there. Right? Vocab doesn't even understand what he's reading right here whatsoever. Right. So, Michael Brown, uh, you know. It, I and like I said, Salakia, this is talking about at the end when his son comes back. But it says when the sun comes back, the curses that were on them are going on their enemies, which means what? That these curses will be following these guys until the sun comes and gets them from those lands. And then after he comes and gets them from that, now the curses go on these other people who persecuted them. That's why it's beautiful because Vocab's such a liar. 
He's going to try to act like enemies means something other than the, the nation of people that were doing you wrong. But God made sure to throw on the end of that the enemies who persecuted you. So he can't try to say the lie that he's going to try to say. I don't think he's all the way what you would call traditional dispensational because, for example, he has a book. I forget the title. It's something like Not Afraid of the Antichrist or something like that. And it's a really good book that he wrote with, uh, was it Craig Keener? I think it was Craig Keener. And in that book, uh, they they discuss uh, some things that would differentiate them from dispensationalists, mainly yeah. not believing in this idea of a rapture before seven-year tribulation. That's the key thing. So, Well, do you believe that? Do you believe there's going to be a rapture before this seven-year tribulation thing you're talking about? We know that at the tribulation you're talking about, the seven-year tribulation, that's called Jacob's trouble in the Bible. It's not something separate than that. It's not something extra for Christian or people in the religion of Christianity and all the madness you guys made up, man. He's not 100% sort of traditional in that. Now me, just somewhat biographical, I was raised dispensational like most kind of American Christians. That's kind of what they saw around them. And when I became reformed, my eschatology shifted kind of last. <laughs> This guy's so the testimony of Yahweh Shai shifted last for him because he said it's the man. My soteriology was first. So he doesn't know nothing about the end times. But the end times was prophesied about. And prophecy is the the testimony of Yahweh Shai, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So why would you leave eschatology behind? Why would that become last? He's saying that because he doesn't know what the hell's going on when you're asking him these questions about what's about to happen in the end. But he's sitting here running his mouth as if he knows. What the hell's going on, period? <laughs> We're in the end. We're in the last kingdom. He knows nothing about it. And now I'm still in a place where I'm still sorting out regularly what's the dispensational part that I can keep and what's the dispensational part that I can't keep to have a consistent schema for end times events. So <laughs> he has look at he has no idea about end time events. See, these guys are running around talking. They're not understanding how real this is. Meanwhile, he's running to those people out there in the Israel newspaper trying to tell them stuff, not knowing that these people are preparing themselves for our trouble, for Jacob's trouble. He doesn't understand. He's acting like he doesn't understand, but he's a major part of helping these people do what they're getting ready to do to God's people. He's fighting against God. He's going to pay for it, though, when it's all said and done. I'm still working through that, so I may or may not have uh, agreements with Brown on that, but I don't, I don't know yet. My tendency is to focus on the things that I do believe are more clear, specifically in that verse, circumcision of the heart. <laughs> See that, guys? Remember I told you this guy omits shit. The Bible, does, he just takes stuff. He's not even interested. No, 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 no. Let me stop it. He knows what the hell that said right there, man. He's over here trying to act stupid and play dumb now, but he's wise when it comes to uh, the circumcision of the heart. Meanwhile, the Lord is telling the people that he's scattered, I'm going to gather you from where I scattered you, and then I'm going to circumcise your heart. The people that he scattered is the nation of Israel. It just so happens when we go to the New Testament and it talks about circumcising the heart in the new covenant, that's the covenant that he's making with who? The children of Israel, which is the exact same thing that's being said right here in Deuteronomy, but he just can't seem to get it. He's trying to take that part right there where God is literally, Deuteronomy is to the Israelites. Vocab is trying to take that right there and act like that circumcision of the heart has something to do with him. But the funny part is this. Vocab Malone doesn't understand how he's making, how, how, his, how every time, like I said, this is all you got to do to make him a liar. Just show him that something God said was going to happen in the future with Israel. Vocab is saying that he's the new Israel. So, but what he, but, but what he's forgetting to do right here is he's forgetting to look at this scripture with a new covenantal lens like he says that he does. So when God said he's going to gather the Israelites, Vocab needs to explain to us how in the end that's talking about him because he's the new Israel. But see, he's trying to get out of all of that because this guy is damn, he's a devil who's a scholar, man. He's a smart scholar, theologian, Phoenix Seminary. That'd be the main thing that I would say. This is the key promise here out of everything I would say that's wow. Look at that. So now, so now, vocab can go through Moses's promises and tell them that this is the main promise, and it's it, it's the new covenant. But every single part of that is the main promise, and it's, it's unbelievable. But why are we looking to point out what's the main promise? Like this? Oh, this is more important than this. this. So it's not important that they're going to get delivered from the hands of the people that hate them. That's not important. It's not important that these curses we just watched these guys go through through all these kingdoms are now getting ready to be placed on somebody when you just said that the curses are over. It literally says they're done. So clearly, vocab, you're reading the Bible wrong.
the future prophecy said that they're going to be under the curses until God comes and gets them and puts the curses on their enemies, man. But what does that go back to? That goes back to Genesis 27 to 27. Blessed whoever blesses the Israelites and cursed whoever curses them. They're getting ready to get cursed with the same curses that the Israelites were cursed with. This guy is a lying sack of shit, man promise and the reason is because it shows up in the new testament so strongly where you see this idea of they were cut to the heart and acts for example and then you see people having a new heart right and the man you guys this vulcan you guys he is it, you, and you know he's consistently doing it though but he's been doing it this is a this guy <laughs> this guy got a smoke room where he just teaches the bible wrong <laughs> Wow. The flesh is taken away. I'm sorry, the heart of stone, rather, is taken away in the heart of... Vocab doesn't seem to understand that, that Deuteronomy 30 is talking about the Lord taking these guys from their land and then making the new covenant with them, then circumcising their heart. Exactly what the new covenant says God's going to make with them. He's telling them he's going to do that when he comes and grabs them from all these lands. That's what Deuteronomy 30 is saying, Vocab flesh is given so that's a key element in what god does and those temporal material things they're not as important or not as relevant in the new covenant i don't believe those curses they fall upon anybody who's outside of the covenant <laughs> okay so once again you guys here goes more jargon guess what who's outside of the covenant because the covenant is being made with israel vocab so what are you saying there the bible says the curses are going on whoever did something to israel you're trying to, what's this weird word, oh, whoever's outside of covenant? The Bible doesn't have to say outside of covenant. The Bible said whoever persecuted you, your enemies. Why are you flipping it from what it says? Damn, this dude's so the devil. It's, it's not an ethnic thing because Galatians 3.13, the verse after it speaks about the Gentiles being in the covenant. You guys, what is this about an ethnic thing? What was all this change? So, so you're arguing what the Bible said. What, 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 where's the ethnic word have to come in at? Who persecuted the Israelites? Devil? But guess what? Vocab said. Vocab said they don't know who the real Israelites are anymore. Only God knows. But he's the spiritual Israelite. They're the new Israel, man. This is all the madness that comes from this guy. Right out of Galatians 3.14. Uh, uh, Galatians 3.14. Like I said, that sums it up. It used to be John 3.16. Now it's Galatians 3.14. That's the one now. That, sum, that, that erases everything. Galatians 3.14 means this. It means everything that we read. Deuteronomy 30, the curse is nothing because Galatians 3.15. This guy does not understand the Bible. He's trying to make God contradict himself and make God a liar every time. You see that? This is all you got to do. Ask him about a scripture like that. He's going to make God a liar on the spot every time. He mentions the Gentiles right after 3.13 says, if your sin is paid for, then you're not under the curse. I'm paraphrasing it because we already read it, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> Once again, guys, we, we, we've established that vocab doesn't understand what's going on, right? Because clearly he's reading Moses. He's reading the words of God in the Torah. When God says that he's going to put the curses on these guys when he comes and gets them from the lands that he scattered them. And we know they got scattered for a curse. So if they're scattered every day that they're scattered, they're under the curse still. So it, it, vocab is just dumb, man. No, 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 he's not. He's smart. He's, he's hella smart. But... The, the idea of returning to the land and all that stuff, to me, that's not nearly as important. So I don't focus. Wow, you guys. So you see that? You see, you know what that means? That vocab doesn't care about our captivity. That's not important to vocab through the Bible that he reads, that the chosen people of God who got kicked out of the land, God, God prophesied that he was going to kick these guys out of their land and scatter them among the nations and they weren't going to get no rest. Their children would be sold to other people. They would be oppressed. They would never have the rulership. They would be loaned to. They would have evil oppressors over them. They would go on slavery to slave ships. All that would happen to them. Vocab says it's not a big deal when God says he's going to turn that back from them and take them back to their land. That's not no big deal to Vocab Malone. God, Lee. And the cold part is if this is actually talking about, if, if he believes this is talking about the white Jewish people, wouldn't that make him anti-Semitic? <laughs> So it's like he shows his uh, his hatred towards Israel, but you can't hate Israel that much if you love these Jewish people that much really believing that this is talking about them. Your hatred for Israel that you show shows that you know this is talking about us. This guy said it's not a big deal for Israel to go back to their land, and that's all that these guys are talking about? That's the promise that was made to them through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that they would go back to this land flowing with milk and honey? Vocab Malone is saying that that's not a big deal. The big deal is the circumcision of the heart, Galatians 3.15. He doesn't even understand that. So, so this is just showing you guys that this guy is a pure, rotten devil, man. Pure, rotten devil. 
it is the will of God to deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and take us back to our own land. Isn't that what it says in Luke 1 and 68? That's the will of the, the will of God. Vocab says that's not a big deal, man. Damn. On it as much. I focus on the circumcision of the heart. The circumcision of the heart. I focus on that. I don't focus on all the words of God. I focus on the circumcision. So Vocab is explaining to you exactly how he reads the Bible. He's not concerned with God's prophecies. He's not concerned with what God says he's going to do before he does it. He's concerned with what he wants to pick out and try to twist. Because the circumcision of the heart that that's talking about in that scripture is talking about the new covenant when God circumcises the heart of the Israelites, the covenant that he made with them. That's what that whole thing's talking about. Vocab alone just showed you guys that he is reading stuff and literally just taking one piece out in front of the whole world. These guys are talking about context. This is why he keeps going to Galatians 3.15. He's not reading the whole Bible. He doesn't get it. He's, he's proving it. That is important no matter where you're at geographically. And no <laughs> That's important wherever you're at, no matter where you're at geographically. Huh? You see how slick vocab is with his tongue? The circumcision of the heart matters. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if God kicked you out of your land. As long as your heart is circumcised, stay out of your land. Continue to be under the hand of the heathen who don't keep the laws of God, who teach you to break the laws. We want you to stay. This is what vocab is saying. We want the Israelites to stay out of their land. And I'm going to focus on the circumcision of the heart. <laughs> Meanwhile, the nations that are around about you, their hearts aren't circumcised. But I want you to have your heart circumcised around all these nations while they just stomp on you. I don't want you to be in your own land. I don't want you to control your own destiny. This nigga is a devil, man. Your ethnicity is. So some of the difference between a Christian and a Hebrew is a life, for example, Ash. Is that you don't believe the Bible, that you just read Deuteronomy 30. You just showed us the difference. You just read every scripture, what God said he's going to do. This is his counsel. This is his will. This is what he's going to do. Prophecy. I tell you guys what, what I'm going to do before it happens, and you get to watch me do it. You just sat here and picked out one piece and said, this is the most important part. The rest of it doesn't matter. You going back to the land, that's not that big important part. The ethnicity, that doesn't matter. You just sat here and said all that. It doesn't matter that somebody uh, did something to these guys. <laughs> this is crazy as hell. It doesn't matter they've been oppressed. God said, I'm putting curses on somebody. That doesn't matter. You're going to tell everybody there's no more curses. Uh, but now we see why. This guy is literally reading the Bible and taking one scripture and standing on it. And that's, the, it, oh man, it, that's the end all be all. How you say it? Gosh. That's correct. Is emphasis. It's not just that we disagree about everything. Sometimes it's a matter of emphasis. Are you? So what go emphasis ahead. would a, a Hebrew Israelite put on the uh, subject of the gospel that you don't agree with? Well, it depends on the Hebrew Israelite, right? So Dowell and the straightway guys were recently on Jason Whitlock. And what did they say there? They said they had to come after IUIC was on there because IUIC taught that this truth was only for certain nations. And Dow and, and the former NFL players that he brought with him, three gentlemen, they wanted to let Jason Whitlock know that this message was for all people. So we would agree with Dowell on that part versus IUIC. But... We would not agree then with Dow saying, and then it means that you keep the laws, the statutes, and commandments, putting the old covenant upon people when you have Paul saying, why are we trying to do that when neither you nor your forefathers could do that? And it's not he goes, Volcab well, again, trying to tell people don't keep God's laws. See the double talker, then they'll turn around and say, no, I'm not saying don't keep God's laws. I'm just saying, eh. Not just Paul, but there's lots of places where that's, we're not dumping the old covenant contents into the new covenant. In the we're not dumping the old covenant contents, but then he'll say, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. He'll say all that, thou shalt not commit adultery. Those are old covenant concepts, vocab, aren't they? What the hell are you talking about? This guy's just a liar. In that way. So there'd be disagreement on that with Dow. The disagreement, for example, you mentioned the Dr. Brown, Deuteronomy 28. That was a gentleman from Sakari who asked a question, right? He can't stop thinking about it, brothers. You see that? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So you might be a gentleman from Sakari who asked a question, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, I was just laughing, man, because we had a good old laugh about that Michael Brown thing, man. So you might be affiliated with Sakari, if I had to guess. Yeah, that was my, that was my former teacher. Why former? Why former? See, this is my little bro, Oz, right here, right? Look at this devil no swag, man. Look at him. Oh, why former? Why former? Look at it. Look at his face. 
He thought he got, oh my goodness, wait a minute, former, former, maybe I can talk about these guys somewhere. White former. This lets you know wherever Vocab goes, if he hears anything that concerns Sakari, he stops. His whole world stops. Boom. Wait a minute, what, 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 what did you say? You see this Vocab? This is like five years ago, right? <laughs> this is how long ago this was, man. And you see this young brother right here? This is young brother Ashraka, the brother that you're talking to right here. All praises in this call because none of us know the future. And how would I have known, man, that this guy right here, this young brother right here that showed up to come listen to the word that day was going to be on this day in front of the devil, no swag, Malone, asking him questions that he can't explain. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. See, this little dude right here is right. now right here, and he's the head of his own camp, still doing the work of the Most High God in Dallas now, all right? He was in Seattle. Now he's in Dallas, all right? Still doing the same thing. You guys, make sure you go subscribe to this brother's channel, right? All praise to the most high. This guy vocab's a devil. Oh, hold up, hold up. Oh, former? Why former? Uh, no particular reason. I just am not under that umbrella anymore. Yes, there's no strife, vocab. There's no hate. Matter of fact, the day before you spoke to him, I was just on the phone with him. It's, it's crazy to have the very next day, the most high just brought me to the TV just to see it right when he popped on. That's how crazy this is. But, you know, that's still a brother I talk to consistently. I oh, crazy. agree with him doctrinally. But, yeah, that was a good question on his part. But thwata, thwata. Okay. you um, you brought up emphasis and uh, you brought up something talking about uh, circumcision of the heart earlier yeah. when the brother asked you about Jeremiah 31, 31. Um, there's a belief that when the laws are in our inward parts that we're more so going to have to keep them without thinking. When you brought up um, circumcision of the heart, um, when I look at that, it gives the same emphasis on the law, statutes, and commandments. For example, the fact that it is an Old Testament concept, when David is talking about uh, or when, when, it's, when it's talking about circumcision of the heart, it says that I be no more stiff neck. Right. So that's, that's uh, making someone more susceptible or not even susceptible, but more likely to keep the commandments. They're more right, because if you have a heart of stone, you, you buck up against the word. You don't keep the commandments. When you have a heart of flesh, then you do keep the commandments, right? When your heart is circumcised, you're keeping the commandments. When your heart is uncircumcised, it's because you're not keeping the commandments, right? Simple concept. More adherent, less likely to buck against the laws that you should commandments. Like, for example... Right, so heart of um, flesh versus heart of stone. I think we agree. I think what we disagree about is the content of the commandments in the new covenant. And if you're saying you still agree with... T so he's saying he doesn't agree with... He doesn't agree with what we're saying the law is. <laughs> so when your heart is circumcised, you won't keep the law of God. You'll keep some other law. Teachers at Sakari, you don't think we're in the new covenant yet. So we're going right. to have strong disagreements. I think we've had a peaceful conversation, so this is not a diss. And I, you probably think some, the same thing about me as far as this thing I'm about to say. The idea that we're not in the new covenant to me is in, incredibly unbiblical. Like he says, he'll say it's incredibly unbiblical, but when we go to the Bible and see what it says the new covenant is, he can't demonstrate that happening. But when he tries to, it's a lie. <laughs> it's not even true what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? So he's saying something's unbiblical, but when we go look at what the new covenant is that God said that he's making, that has not happened. Not one word of it. <laughs> We're still teaching each other. We don't, everybody does not know the most high from the, from the, from the uh, least to the greatest of them, man. This guy is crazy. He says, I will put my laws in your heart and in your mind. You won't teach each other. Eh. There's, I don't see any way to defend the idea that Jesus did not institute or inaugurate the new covenant. I think it's... See, institute and, and inaugurate, like I said, the blood was shed for the new covenant. That blood has been shed. That sacrifice has been made. We haven't been brought over to the bond of the covenant, which is what Ashraka is trying to explain to you in Ezekiel 20. You don't let him get there, though. It's incredibly clear that he did that doesn't mean it's entirely fulfilled see how that see that little that little sweep around doesn't mean it's entirely fulfilled see that little sweep around right there the lord said this is the covenant i'm making this is it that hasn't happened yet all the little dance around oh all the way fulfilled partially fulfilled that i man, man to hell with that what we what we read this is the covenant i'm making with the house of judah and house israel is not even being made with you anyway <laughs> it was crazy man just like when Abraham began as Israel, if you want to use that term, or you could say Jacob, if you want to make it Jacob, but the patriarchs began Israel, clearly it wasn't the completion of Israel. The Messiah hadn't come yet. It was an unfolding program. What the hell is Vocab talking about, man? 
He just see he just goes on and on and on and on. What are you talking? It wasn't the full completion of Israel yet because my hat side. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> oh my God! But to say that it wasn't instituted, I think would be a problem. I think Sakari is making the same mistake with the new covenant. Man, this dude right here. We don't really care what you think about anybody making the same mistake. We just heard you break down the Bible in the most atrocious way. You took two different things that had nothing to do with it, with each other and put them together. You do stuff like this all the time. So you talking about the new covenant, you think we're making a mistake. When we go read the new covenant, you can't demonstrate it happening without you lying, period. I think they would well, do much better if they like, recognize we are in the new covenant. Because otherwise you just act like you're still living in the old covenant. You know what I mean? Go ahead. And I got let's Pastor let's Zach let's prophetically let's speaking up next, but go ahead. I'm going to try to make it a way. Let's make it about me. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to talk about the brothers and the Sakari. Because... Again, well, it's just Hebrew Israelites. So oh, now it's just Hebrew Israelites. A second ago, it was Sakari. <laughs> forget Sakari, Ash. I'm not trying to do nothing there. Let's I'm just not, not, a lot of Hebrew Israelites say that, though. Well, I, okay, just, okay. A lot, even some Hebrew roots people say that. Anybody who says that, how about that? Anybody who says that, they're living in the past, in a place they shouldn't so, be living. According to Volcan Malone, the guy who doesn't understand the Bible. Let's deal with contracts, just just very briefly, because you said. You know, you have a hard time believing that Christ didn't ultimately, we'll, we'll say, draft up the contract. And I believe that that's a bit of a straw man argument because we believe the same thing. We believe that who the world called Christ died so that there can be a contract. But Ezekiel 20 and 34, and when you read down, it says that there will be a walking into the bond of the covenant. The same way that God made a covenant with Abraham, we had to walk into the bond of said covenant. Ezekiel 20 and 33, right? It says, As I live, saith the Lord God. It says, Surely, with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with mighty fury poured, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. It says, And I will bring you out from the people. See, like vocab, these guys don't even talk about this part of the Bible at all. This is why he can jump and talk about the new covenant, this new covenant, that. This type of part, this, this part of the Bible, he doesn't even deal with. He doesn't even know what the hell is going on. When it comes to stuff like this, right? So the Lord said, this is the prophecy to the people who got scattered and kicked out of their land. The Lord said, I will bring you out from the people and I will gather you. Remember, whenever you, with the, the, the opposite of, of being scattered is the Lord gathering us. When he gathers us, well, who, who is that talking about? That's talking about the one the world calls Christ. He's the one that the, that the Lord is going to use to come and gather or save us with the angels and put us back in our land, right? So it says, and I will bring you out from the people. And will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered, which, which will do what? In the curse. Why are we in these countries scattered? Those are the curses of Deuteronomy 28 and the Old Covenant, right? It says, wherein you are scattered with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. It says, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. So this is where we're going after Jesus comes and gets us. It says, and there will I plead with you face to face. It says, like as I pleaded with your fathers. I'm trying to figure out if Vocab Malone believes that he's going to be part of these people right here who gets gathered and took into the wilderness to, to be pled with face to face. It says, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there I will plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. So clearly the same people that came out of Egypt, which was the Israelites, are going to be the same people the Lord's coming to get to take back into the wilderness again. But we don't hear anything about this scripture right here from Vocab Malone. Matter of fact, according to Vocab, we need to look at this with a new covenantal lens. And since the new, since the Israel, new Israel is talking about the Christian church, then this is not talking about the people who were in the land of Egypt before. It was not talking about them. It's talking about everybody in the Christian church now, making God a liar. But, but that's what Vocab does. I love to see how he spins this with his new covenantal lens, like he says, right? It says, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. It says, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Do you see that? So that hasn't happened yet. We haven't been brought into the bond of the covenant, which is what we read where the Lord will put the laws in our heart. Vocab Malone, these guys are saying that that's already happened. We're already in it, whatever, whatever the case. Oh, but it's not fully. So it'll be fully, I guess he's saying fully when this happens, but he doesn't even talk about this. He probably doesn't even know this is here, right? It says, verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. So there's going to be Israelites who get on those ships, get taken to the wilderness just to get killed in front of everybody. It says, and I will bring you forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel and you shall know I am the Lord Yahweh, right? So 
Vocab Malone, explain that right there. This is what he's talking about. This is the bond of the covenant. When did, so uh, this guy Vocab is crazy as hell. Let me know, if, are you going to be part of these people right here, Vocab? And that, that took place in the wilderness. Ezekiel 20 gives you um, a, a point at which we are delivered from the hand of our enemies, like Luke chapter 1 talks about. Then it says like we death. go. See how this guy keeps on throwing in death? When the Bible says we'll be delivered from the hands of our enemies? <laughs> We just read what it said in Ezekiel, man. I'm going to come and gather you from all the countries. Those, the, the, the countries we're being gathered from are, are the hands that our enemies had us in. All right? That's the hand of our enemies. This guy's over talking about death. This guy doesn't, man, this is hilarious, man. Then it says we walk into the wilderness and we are uh, judged face to face like our fathers were. And then we walk into the bond of the covenant. So I don't feel like we're in the bond of the covenant the same way T-Mobile has contracts available. But if you have not signed one with them, you're 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 not in it. So I feel like that's Thank you. the the difference in understanding there. But if you could go to Ezekiel 20, um, starting at verse 34, you know I'd be glad to look over that with you. I Maybe will. You let's make that. On. We might need to make that our last passage. But if you think the enemy ultimately that the new covenant is going to deal with Ash are not some flesh and blood people that uh, people don't like or hate or they view as historical enemies. It's death and sin. You hear that lie right there, guys? You hear this lie right here? So now, there's not some physical enemy that the Israelites are getting ready to be de delivered out of the hand of. You know, I guess th these guys talk about a great tribulation. I mean, I, I don't understand. I don't understand their doctrine. All we know is that there's Jacob's trouble. God said he's going to be saved out of it. Is he being saved out of death and sin? Or is there somebody's hand that he's getting ready to be saved out of? This guy is crazy as hell. But this is Christianity. This is what it's done. But, you know, we can't forget he's a scholar and he's an author. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to take that from him, man. All right? He's, he's intelligent. And that's in 1 Corinthians 15. <laughs> and that's in 1 Corinthians 15, right? So I guess that trumps it all. So because he's saying that that's in 1 Corinthians 15, all these scriptures that we got, all of these scriptures we got that talk about being delivered out of the hand of our enemies and all they that hate us are erased because he can say something is in 1 Corinthians 15. This guy is crazy, man. No, no. This guy's an this guy's an author. So when it That's says that say, death where is thy victory, right? When it says I will deliver you from the hand of your enemies and all that hate them, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you see that? And what's so cold is that Vocab knows that he's just playing the devil. Vocab, what does that mean? Can you go out and answer that? You guys talk about Israelites all, all day. Answer that question, man. What does it mean to be delivered out of the hand of your enemies and all that hate you? It's talking about being delivered out of the hand of sin and death? <laughs> us would be delivered from our captivity like take the book of acts acts chapter one start at verse five when it says have you come at this time to restore the kingdom of israel you guys watch vocab man christ didn't say no he said that this just ain't the time and it's not for you to know that time the reason why they're asking that question is because prophecy dictates that there are certain things that were going to come to pass they were just kind of jumping the gun on some of them which is why you have brothers like luke that had to really uh draft up that document the way that he did because what he wanted to do was surgically go in and prove that you know this man meets the criteria of Hamashiach that we've been waiting on the book of Hebrews also the reason why documents like that exist is because brothers had to discuss the validity of who the world calls Christ hold on yeah, Ash, are you saying like Hebrews nine fifteen, therefore he's the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. See, the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant, even then it's just hilarious because these guys are trying to act like they have something to do with the first covenant then. You know what I'm saying? If his blood was shed for the acts committed under the first covenant, what does that have to do with you? That means that he didn't die for you then, right? Because you weren't under the first covenant, were you no swag? So no matter what you do, it still points back at you that you're wrong, no matter what. You're talking about the first covenant is gone, so now we're, we are underneath the second covenant when the scripture doesn't say that the second covenant was made with anybody but Israel. <laughs> By name, this is crazy. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not enforced as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. And it goes on. So Jesus. That's, that's the whole point. Jesus was the blood shed for that covenant. So the blood has already been shed. The sacrifice has already been had, just like it, out in the wilderness, in the book of Exodus. All right. But like we just said, you haven't crossed over to the bond of the covenant, no sweat.
Jesus has died, therefore the second covenant is inaugurated and it's already taking place because the death is coming. It speaks about people living under this covenant, not the old covenant. And so that's 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 why we would say, hey, no. But I mean, are you saying... It's crazy because they got all this stuff. That's why we would say it doesn't matter what God said the covenant is and who he said he's making it with. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that these things that God said he's going to do, these haven't happened yet. <laughs> So these guys are trying to find a tricky way to say, yes, this has happened, even though God is saying what it is. Damn. That they were fudging the facts in Hebrews? No, I wasn't saying they were fudging it. Wait a minute. Do you think God was fudging the facts in Hebrews when he said what the new covenant was and, what he, and who he said he was making it with? Was God fudging the facts right there? Was he fudging the facts in Jeremiah when he said it? Or you think they're fudging the facts? That's what we should ask him. Is God fudging the facts right here when he says that this is what it is? Oh, let me guess. It's happening and we just don't know it. Can you point out this covenant? Can you demonstrate how it's happening right now? Oh, man. But, you know, like I said, he, he's, he's a theologian. Okay. I was saying that they were for the validity of Christ. I'm saying that you had to realize that in real time, like during those times, there were prophecies they were looking for to come to pass. Yeah, like, like, like the one that we just read in Ezekiel. Or how about the one in Jeremiah 23, when he said that in the days of this king, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. So when Yahweh returned again to these guys, they're like, is now the time? Because they knew that he was going to die. They knew he was going to come back again, right? And the Bible said in the days of him that Israel will be saved. So they're asking the man, is now the time? Simple. But vocab doesn't understand that. So I used... Um the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6 is an example. You know, they see Christ come on the scene because they believe on the scriptures that were written about him, but they jumped the gun on a few things. That's, right? that's true, but here's were, what's interesting. Can I show you something about, watch this, about this? They, did, they quick, didn't really know what they were talking about because it says restore the kingdom to Israel. Okay, I've said that they didn't really know what they were talking about because it says restore the kingdom to Israel. So wh why would that mean they didn't know what they were talking about because they said that? What are you talking about? This dude is crazy, man. Uh -huh. that, that's not something that they understood properly. You mean that <laughs> the kingdom wasn't going to be restored to Israel? No, it's, they, they still don't fully understand what Christ is doing. Restore the kingdom. What, restore what would be the kingdom that they're wanting back? The Davidic kingdom in which the king could still kill you and sleep with your wife? Now, do you guys hear that crap? This is what this guy, see, this guy just changes the Bible everywhere, makes stuff mean stuff it doesn't mean. So I guess in David's kingdom, that was okay to do, huh? I guess God didn't jack David up for doing that, for one. For two, look at this, y'all. The restoration of Israel, we all know this one, Amos 9 and 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. This guy's talking about what kingdom they want back. You talk about the Davidic kingdom? When they're talking, they're talking. The Lord said he's raising up the tabernacles of David again. No swag. What world are you in, man? Yes, they were waiting for the kingdom to be raised back up again. But all this talk that he's doing is just him lying, though. All of his lying. None of this makes sense. It's all, it's all, it's all madness, man. You see what I'm saying? This, well, this, that, this, that's a that's a that's a straw man because David wasn't right in doing that. No, I know, and, but what I'm saying. Oh, oh so he knows it. Thing is, G Jesus is going to do so something be no, better. Was, he's was, right. He's better than David, yeah, right? He quick, said he's David, better. Because he's better than David, and he's going to rule on the throne. But the Father still said he's raising up the tabernacles of David, though. So what the hell are you talking about? All of this is to try to say that the Israelites were wrong because they thought the kingdom was going to be restored to Israel. Restored to what? Restored back to the Davidic kingdom where the king could... All this bullshit. It's, it's, it's Salakia, man. Anyway, so their was understanding was still incomplete. There was, never a covenant. there was never a covenant where somebody could do that. So that's disingenuous to say that. No, 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 but no, no. It's, hold on, hold it on. Does. Ash, it's not disingenuous. I'm actually making a legitimate point from my perspective. No, you're not. Your point's ridiculous. Effective. You said a, it's, you said it's, a let covenant let me, where a king could come in, yes. kill you, and take your wife. That's not covenant. I, okay I know it's wrong. against Ash. I know it's against the covenant. It's not disingenuous. Okay. So then, what the hell is your point? What do you mean they want to go back to a kingdom where the king can do that? That's not the kingdom that they were in. What are you talking about? 
here's the reason why I made that that statement. What I'm saying is they think that this idea of restoring the kingdom of Israel is like back to some kind of temporal political rulership, and then maybe they, they think it lasts to ever, but Jesus is doing something bigger and better. It lasts what? To ever? What? Look at this, y'all. Isaiah 49 and 5, it says, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. It says, Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. It says, And he said, It is a light thing that, sh that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. Okay, oh, which they said, restore Israel, restore. They didn't understand it. Look what God just said right here. The Lord just said that he's going to restore the preserved of Israel. So when they said it's now the time that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel, it's because scriptures like this, they knew the scriptures. They knew about the, the, the dream Daniel seen. So they're like, man, so is this the end of it? Because you've returned to us again. Are you, are you here to restore it now? You know what I'm saying? This guy is crazy, man. It says, and to restore the preserved of Israel, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation to the end of earth, right? So these guys, they want to jump on the salvation. Oh, you guys are supposed to be light to the Gentiles, but they don't want Israel to be restored, though. They want Israel to, everybody, oh, why don't you be a light to the Gentiles? Be a light to the Gentiles. All the people who are telling you, you're never going to be restored. Anything that says restore, they try to twist it, but then tell you, you got to be a light to them. This is how crazy this is, man. But Jesus is doing something bigger and better, right? Remember he said he's better than David. One better than David, better than Solomon, better than Moses, better than the prophets. Okay, so so okay, so what does that have to do? So because he's better, that means he's not going to restore the kingdom back to him? What the, this nigga, man, it's amazing to me the way this guy wakes up and lies on God every day. So because Hamashiach is better, God is not going to restore or, or rebuild the tabernacle of David that is fallen. God's not going to restore the preserved of Israel anymore because, man, this is crazy how these guys do this. They try to make it seem like you're talking down on Hamashiach for doing what the Most High said he's going to do. These guys are crazy, but they act like they're reverencing him so much and making him higher than that one. Really, they're spitting on him because this is the word here. This is what the Bible says is going to happen. These guys try to act like it's not going to happen, but then try to act like they're bigging up Hamashiach more than you. You name it, Jesus is better than. This new kingdom is also going to be better than. So they had an incomplete understanding. And then... The, the incomplete understanding was not of any of this shit you're talking about, about better. And they, they, know, they knew the kingdom was going to be better. Like, what are you talking about? What they didn't understand is that it wasn't time for the kingdom to be restored yet. Like he said, Yahushua didn't say to them, no, there's a much better kingdom. He told them it's not for you guys to know that yet. It's not for you guys to know the seasons or the times that the Most High has put in, in, in his time. You know, however he said it. All right. This guy's trying to act like they didn't understand them asking. He's acting like them asking that question, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel, means that they didn't fully understand that there's a better kingdom that's not going to be restored to Israel. Like, what do you, man, this dude is, 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 man. And his answer is basically, yes, and here's how I'm going to begin establishing it. Okay, so now his answer is, yeah, huh? So he said, it's now the time you hand the kingdom over to Israel, and you're saying that his answer was yes, and this is how I go about establishing it, okay? He didn't say yes, though, so I don't know what vocab is talking about, man. And if it was yes, if the kingdom was being restored to Israel at that time, Israel wouldn't have to go into captivity after that. So what are you talking about, vocab? The new kingdom of Israel. Because he says, okay, you don't know the times. Father says his own authority. But remember, he says, all authority has been given to me. And then he says, you're going to go preach. What are they to preach? The kingdom of God. So they're which, preaching. Which what? They're preaching that very the thing. God, I'm, worried about, I'm worried that we might be talking about two different things. We like are. the word kingdom, people look at that. And sometimes there's a separation just based off the fact that they think that the kingdom is a geographical location. When in fact, it no, really no, no, just no. means so immediate. I don't. So that's what why I don't think. That's why I don't think the piece of land in the Middle East is is. I don't, I don't call it the Holy Land because it's not very relevant. The the that's why the Bible says the meek will inherit the earth. Don't you love when they say some stuff like that? So, Bokeh just said that the meek shall inherit the earth, right? So does that 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 definitely excludes his religion, right? That means that the meek inherit the earth. That can't have anything to do with religion, right? Because Christianity is not the meek. How is Christianity the meek? They, everybody in the world is a Christian for the most part. They have billions of billions of people in the religion of Christianity. So that's not the meek. 
the meek of the earth or the last of the earth that's going to be first is talking about <laughs> the Israelites, man. That's who it's talking about. Same people the Bible was written to this whole entire time. But that proves the meek shall inherit the earth proves it's not talking about your guys' religion. The whole earth is the Lord's and we are the Lord's. The earth is the possession of those who are his, and that's gonna take place in the final place. We're not gonna all be stuck in a little piece of land the size of New Jersey. I don't think it's related to a geographical location in that same way. It's ultimately the whole earth. So this idea of the kingdom, and here's would be a difference. If you said you still are learning by people associated with Sakari. You see how this guy keeps on talking about us, man? Like he can't, he can't stop it. Like everywhere he goes, he says, he says our name. Like we are really in this man's mind all day long, man. You believe according to what they taught, if you still hold to it, you'll be beating people, you'll be whipping them, you'll be physically harming them, you'll be treating them poorly. You know what I mean? So that would be the difference in the kingdom and that'd be the difference in our understanding of the gospel. That would be a massive difference, unless you've walked away from that, which would be- You guys, one thing you guys gotta remember, man, is that Hamashiach told us, man, he said, if they hated me, Know that they're going to hate you too, you guys. Even though these people are running around your center acting like they love Jesus, they love Jesus. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. These people don't even teach to keep God's commandments or even try. So we know that they don't love him, right? But he told us that if they hated him, they're going to hate us too. We know that they hate him because they don't even want the blessings that he said he's coming to bring. Vocab's up here saying, if you hold to what Sakari says, isn't it to hell with what Sakari says? It's what the Bible says, right? Sakari is doing nothing but reading what the Bible says, right? Revelation 2 and 27, this is red letter. This is who they say that they that they worship and they they they, they big up them above everything. This is who they're acting. They're acting like they feel like this about this man right here. This is what he said. If you ask vocab what this means, you'll get some funny, funny interpretation because they really hate him. I shock even though they're acting like they love him. But he told us if that, he already told us that they hated him. We know that. You know what I'm saying? We see they hate him now because everything we read, they just say it doesn't mean that anything that's anything that's right. They say it's wrong. Oh, Christ said all foods are clean. He, he was talking about eating all the foods. He, man, oh, Christ was breaking laws big time. I mean, we, we know the type of stuff we've heard from these people over here. So we know that they don't like him. Uh, uh, Revelation 2 and 26, it says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. These guys aren't teaching to keep his works. These guys are teaching to wash people's feet. Like Pastor Eric Mason said, right? It says, To him will I give power over the nation. So if you ask vocab, what does this mean? What does it mean, vocab? to keep his works unto the end. Are, and are you trying to keep his works? Because if you are, he's saying he's gonna give you power over the nations. What does that mean, Volcat? What does it mean to have power over the nations? Explain that. Then it says, and he shall rule them. Who is the he? The he is the one that gets the power over the nations that he's given them the power to do to rule over the nations. It says, he's gonna rule them with a rod of iron as vessels of potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I have received of my father. This is what how, yeah, what I said. Now, you, you say, oh, Sakari believes, Sakari, woo, 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 woo. You're able to project your hatred for Hamashiach off on us because you can't scream and yell at him. But you're yelling at us and saying that we're so wrong because of what we just read right here out of his mouth. So really, you're crucifying him. You're mad at him for what he said. <laughs> so you, you come and try to smack us for reading it and believing what it said. You don't believe it, <laughs> clearly. Great, but if you still think that, then we have a difference of kingdom and gospel. I still 100% think that. And, I and why do you think that? Because you just read it and we believe what Jesus said. Isn't that right? It's not because you just created it in your mind. It's because we just opened the Bible and read that right there. <laughs> we didn't write that. It's, this is what's been there this whole time. So, like I said, these guys don't believe in the Bible at all. These guys are liars. They've, they've created their own little doctrine and they believe that. I think so that you believe you'll be time. whipping people in the, in the, new, con in the new kingdom? Lord willing. But well, you, I believe Do you that believe we're going to be believe... whipping Africans? Do you hear this dude, man? This is the dummy, man. This is what happens when you go onto his hot seat. This is supposed to be the vocab Malone smoke room, and he asks you all the damn questions. <laughs> whipping Africans? Yeah, That's Hamites. A Hamites. People Hamites. descended from Ham live in Africa. So you'll be whipping the Hamites. backs of Ethiopians and Somalians? Yes. And but you, again, do you, you think that's peace? You're using, you're using, you're using. Do you think that's peace? Hey, Vokev, maybe this will make it a little easier for you, right? All right, maybe this will make it easier for you to stomach. Let's 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 take out of whoever. Let's take out of let's take us out of the equation. Let's say we're not the Israelites, Vokev. Whoever they are, this is what the Bible says that they're getting ready to do. You can can you agree with that? Forget putting us on it. The Bible is saying that the Israelites are getting ready to do this, whoever they are. Can we at least admit to that? Damn, you guys are devils. 
misnomers and misnomers. I like to be very specific. I said descendants of Ham. Say, That's not a misnomer. Heathen. Let's just say the heathen. You know what I'm saying? So well, as you, as I mean, you, but I like to, I like to be specific, not right. general. I like to be specific, not general. So, how, so, so now the heathen's not specific enough. <laughs> this guy's over here trying to find a way to create some type of problem for us. That's why it's a problem to talk to this devil ever. Because he's such a snake, you know what I'm saying? In, in general, it's specific. Because when you say Africans, when you say Ethiopians, it goes against the teaching that there are Israelites among these nations. So, but you you don't think they're Africans? Africans? Okay, that's why I said descendants of Ham, though. So yeah, that's a yeah, big yeah. difference. You think you're going to have black slaves? I don't. Nobody gives a damn what you think, vocab. But who comes to you to care what you think? The Bible says what it says. Period, man. Nobody's getting up out of that. The Bible clearly says if you bless Israel, you're getting blessed. If you curse them, you're getting cursed. The Bible clearly says that all thy adversaries, every one of them is going into captivity. None of these words were written by me. These were here long before I was here. So deal with it, devil. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you read them and tell us what it means? Tell us because, because what the cool part is, these scriptures are talking about Israel. You're saying that you're the new Israel. So, so this is supposed to be happening in your favor. But for some reason, you hate everything that's written in the Bible. According to Israel, though. But meanwhile, you're trying to steal their... I mean, this is the most confusing shit I've ever seen, man. I mean, you're not, if you're a heathen. Right, but I'm saying that's why there's a big disagreement. And we can still be peaceful. Notice how I kind of already knew it was up, but I'm no, not... No, you didn't know nothing was up, man. Shut up. Crazy. I'd rather have good, positive conversation with everybody. It'll get us farther. This guy... Now, now this is the type of double tongue... This is the type of double tongue guy we're dealing with, right? Vocabs went on the internet and lied on us on multiple occasions. He's lied about us shooting police officers. He's lied about us doing multiple things. Then he'll come on here and say he wants to have a good discussion. After he goes out and tries to, de and tries to defame us and lie and slander us, and then never turn around and say, okay, Salaki, I was wrong about that. He doesn't even do that. You know what I'm saying? This guy's a lying devil talking about, I'd love to have conversations as he runs to the, to, to, he wants to have a conversation with you. So what, he can take everything you said to the Jewish newspaper? This guy's a fork tongue bastard, man. And notice, I don't have to be dishonest. You don't have to be dishonest. We're You're good. very dishonest, man. You're dishonest as hell, man. Good. But let me let you get the final word. I got to get to these next guys because I'm feeling bad about leaving the hanging. C c the final word, I, we didn't get to get to that Ezekiel passage, and I just don't have more time for this. But I, but if you have a final word of what you want to say, I, I'll, I'll let you take it. We could uh, we could set up a dialogue for it, you know, so we get we get with impatience because you know that's a part of what some of the fervency comes from. So don't take it as utter disrespect. But Deuteronomy chapter thirty says that when the Israelites are no more under the curses and when they become uh, righteous again and when they're delivered from the hand of their enemies and put back in their forefathers' land, when they're given back possession of that, the curses are going to be put on their enemies. And we are talking about the curses of Deuteronomy twenty eight. I would want to hear um, you go into that a little bit more, and I do want to get back in. It's so beautiful how these guys, they, they, you know, remember how they came and they tried to attack Deuteronomy 28 the way they did? They had James White and all these people do all what they did. Remember how hard they were going at it? It's funny because here we are today, and they still got to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? All the fighting, all the punches they've thrown at it, and it's still sitting right here in your face. It ain't went nowhere. You guys still have to deal with it. In Ezekiel chapter 20 with you when we have a chance to build again with that though Shalom. I appreciate it thank you for everything about how you handled it I think we get a lot farther with these types of dialogues Be imagine that we get a lot farther but when you give him dialogues like that he just takes your information and goes and runs it up the street to a bunch of people that he said don't, don't believe in Christ. You know what I'm saying? So this is the game that this guy, this brother in Christ is sitting here playing. Oh, I think we get much farther if we get to have these dialogues because that way I'll be able to write down everything that you say and in the middle of this, I'll be able to ask you, hey, why isn't your teacher anymore? So then you can gather that intel right there. Then after all you get all of your intel gathering, you're gonna go run over here to the news publication and tell them every single thing that you ever heard and saw, right? This is ridiculous, man, but this was beautiful, man. All praises, man. You guys go follow that brother, Ashraka. Check his channel out, man. Uh, shout out to the brothers that got on here too, man. Vocab got done dirty. Like I said, man, the foolish was going to confound the wise, man. It's going to keep on going just like this this whole entire time because this is what the Most High ordained, all right? Until the next one, shout Oh, he's black. Call him coon. Call him coon. Call him coon. Oh, he's black. Oh, he's black. Call him coon. Works every time. Call him coon. Call him coon. Call him coon. Coon. Coon.
Black Coon, Charlotte Holmes.